Hi there, and welcome to another episode of The Inevitable. This is Motor Trends podcast about the future of the automobile. Where are we going and how are we going to get there? I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Ed Lowe. Hi there. I'm Johnny Lieberman, and today's guest isn't necessarily about the EV, but it is about the future of automotive television. We have Mr. Rutledge Wood. This is a guy who I have actually kind of been in the same sphere with for a long time, but never actually sat down and had a conversation with. Everybody tells me what a great guy he is. He's a longtime NASCAR reporter. He's done uh, Top Gear America before Motor Trend did it. I know for sure he's taken at least one job from At me. least one <laughs> from, from Johnny, so I'll shake his hand for that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, great guy. He's a big Toyota nut, apparently, so we'll talk some about that. And yeah, just really looking forward to chatting with Mr. Rutledge Wood because I've heard so many great things about him. Bring him on. Wow, Rutledge Wood. Hi, guys. <laughs> An honor and a privilege. Uh, I feel like I know a lot about you. I know you in general, but this is like the first time we've ever sat down and had this kind of conversation. Yeah, so thanks for having thank me. Thank you what a treat. For, for being on The Inevitable. Well, it's fun. It's, d- d- yeah. Anyway, it's funny. That's not funny. The bell's not funny. I love it. It's funny. Because I, I, you know, both of us are uh, larger gentlemen with beards and glasses, yeah. so yeah. I get a lot of, and you know, one of the the sticky points of my career was, mm. I, I, and I told Adam this. Uh, oh, I've seen the clip. Yeah, this is a true story. But Adam, who? Adam Ferrara. Okay, I'm pronouncing that right. Ferrara, 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 Ferrara. Potato, um, potato. A hundred years ago, when Top Gear is, was it U.S. or America? Top Gear. Uh, Top Gear U.S. was US. ours. Yeah. Okay, so they, I, I, I was in talks with them, and very gleefully, one of the producers called me in. This is because they're just such weird people. And goes, "Oh man, like, dude, you're not going to believe this. We found a guy. He's got your look, but he's southern, so he can bring in that NASCAR demographic. So we don't need you." Wow! And I'm, I'm like, so "Why sorry. are you so gleeful?" And then it turned out it was you. What I apologize. <laughs> I, just, I didn't know. Okay, I, I just want you to know. I, I told someone the other day when they called me about Top Gear. I don't know if you know the story. No. I they called nothing. at the house, right? Phone rings. And I prank called a lot of people in my life. I want to be clear. <laughs> but caller ID was one of the worst things that's ever happened to me. It was such a joy. In the dorms where I lived at the University of Georgia, every phone had the same first three-digit like prefix. It was 357. So we would call it dorm roulette. And you just pick a different four numbers, and we would leave so many messages. Is this like the Jerky Boys era? Yes, but like cleaner. It'd be like, "Hi, it's Patty. I said behind you in English." What, what years were you in college? Uh, I finished high school in '98, so oh, immediately you're... after finished December of '02. Okay, so you're a little younger than than yeah. Than I, f- I, I finished. Okay. I was a semester behind because I had uh, back surgery, but it, it, that was a different time. So I get this yeah, call, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like. Um, it's probably I started working in NASCAR in 2005 through a Craigslist ad, so I'm I'm <laughs> really always wait, wait, wait. hustling. Ed, make a note. We got to get right. back to Craigslist you know, ad. It's a great time. Jump. So That's I'm I, it's now like three years into that. A race fan had loaded something I did onto YouTube illegally. Apparently, nice. uh, this guy John Hessling, who was a producer, saw it and thought like, "Oh, this guy, this guy might be funny. We should look him up." And so this person calls me, and they call, and they're from the Central Booking Agency. And they want to talk to me about a TV show. And I laugh and I tell them, <laughs> you're going to have to come up with a better name than that. That's not going to do it. And so I tough. hang up. And they call right back. And her name is Celia. And she says, hey, um, how about we try this again this time you don't hang up on me? I was like, okay. She's like, I'm from the Central Booking Agency. We were hired <laughs> to find you. You don't have a manager or an agent or any sort of listing. Would you mind not hanging up on me so I can do my part of the job? And I was like, I am so sorry. <laughs> That's amazing. That's my bad. So, well, I wonder if it was this guy John that called me because I, I literally got a because I as far, so b- before uh, your Top Gear there was like a failed NBC Top yes. Gear, and I which I've never seen, but I've seen parts of it fast forwarded in front of me. I got yes, I got <laughs> hired to write jokes for Tanner. Oh no way for Tanner. Oh, that's like, cool. But like, yeah, like, and hired is the wrong word because I was never paid. But they were like, ah, could you write? Because he, he's going to be talking. Stand. He's going to be talking to Adam Carolla, and we want him to be funny, and he's a little nervous. So, could you write a joke or two? Yeah, because NBC had done like a yes. uh, Night Rider yes. 
pilot. They had done a season oh. of Knight Rider. Knight Rider did yeah. do well, so they were like, "Well, yes. this other show is not going to do well." So yeah, they m- mostly because Knight Rider was being chased by Ford Edges. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a harder story <laughs> to tell with a Mustang. You know, I, I wonder. Yeah. Do you think the car had a British accent still? Oh, oh, I, it was so one of the great questions in life. So bad. Well, Eddie, let's let's hang on. Let's but, 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 real, real quick. So oh, so so. So again, uh, but I was Scott is, Messick was the other EP, and it might have been Scott, great oh, guy. Scott's, I can't. But they knew about me from NBC. Yeah, you know, because they were like, "Oh, this guy could write a joke. Like he could be funny for this comedy car show." And then, like, I literally, it was it was almost as if he said, "Great news." He's like, "Great news. We got to talk." Like, we found someone that's fun like and, you. And I, but he's he just he's got your look, but he's southern, so we could bring in like the NASCAR demographic. And I was like, and? He's like, and that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. It's not but, my life. But wait, wait, Cra- Craigslist. We've got to go well, to NASCAR let, let's, Craigslist. Let's, can we just establish something? Because I don't, I don't oh. think we're going to cover this in the intro. Ah. Who is Rutledge Wood? For those who, <laughs> for those who don't oh, know you. Great point. Okay? I mean, this is a, this is a who podcast. Who doesn't know Rutledge Wood? This is a podcast about the future of automotive. Sure. So we're going to dive into how much you know about that. But let's just broaden it a little bit. How do you... Um, how do you how do you give your elevator pitch? What's how do I get like, here? What's your what's your you uh, want the what, cliff notes? Yeah, what's your like three three <laughs> well, sentences? When, uh, you know, when two version. people see a gleam <laughs> right. in their eye, <laughs> right. that was Bill and Claudia, right. and uh, <laughs> yeah. So it turns out I just a dude that loves cars, love people. Uh, started working in NASCAR in two thousand five, mm-hmm. and uh, kept hustling my way to get in front of the camera. I ended up uh, doing six seasons of Top Gear US. I've done some food shows. Uh, with my buddy Guy Fietti, we made a show called Southern and Hungry with my friend Damaris Phillips. Uh, I hosted Hyperdrive on Netflix, which is, I right. think, maybe the greatest insane car show uh, competition of all time. Okay. Uh, did a show called American Barbecue Showdown that I helped create over there. And then I watched that. That was a great time. That was a great time. I'm very hungry. You just mentioned it. So good. I was not eating meat at the time. <laughs> I just had to. T- I got so. I got. I gained so much weight doing Southern and Hungry that by, I just needed to take like a, a reset. So we pitched this other show. They buy it. We started doing it. But the kicker was a lot of the judges who have been in the barbecue scene, they, they can't taste the same. Like their intake of salt and stuff has burned certain things. So we would try stuff, and they would look at me and be like, what is that? I'd be like, that's cardamom. That's, you feel that little? And they're like, yeah, hey, yeah. I can really taste the cardamom. I was like, damn it. Dang it. Excuse me. I blew it already. But anyway, so I did that. Uh, and then biggest thing I've probably ever done is a show called Floor is Lava on Netflix. My son. Uh, well, real quick, time. can I tell you who Rutledge Wood is? So. Uh, my yes, my yes, son yes alter, you, you alternate r- 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 yes, yes, brother yes, from another yes. mother just, Zaro, just, just, uh, just, just, just Walmart Rutledge Wood <laughs> uh, Jewish Walmart Rutledge Wood um, my kid you know he loves the floor is lava like you know he was, was I guess he was five when he started we started watching it maybe even four because he did yeah. like three seasons yep three seasons. and um and I was like you know I was like you know I know him. And he's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, he, "Like, I know, like, we're kind of yeah. colleagues in a way, you know, we're bros." Ifs. And so I sent him a message, and I'm like, "Hey, like, you know, just you know, just want to let you know, like, we, you know, me and my kid have been watching this guy with no prompting. Sends a video. Oh, he actually, you asked, what's your son's name? Yeah, and I knew something was like, He sends a video back, like, "Hey, Richard, this is a nice message, nice message." And then, and remember, the floor is love. And Don't my fall in. my kid's head blew <clears> up. <throat> like it was. It's like magic. And then, well, now, but now, daddy, the, daddy. but now the thing has become: Superman. we'll be watching all kinds of stuff, like like Sonic, sure. And I, you know, I, I know James Marsden. I just name drop a little bit, and he, I'm like, oh, I know him. He's like, I want a video, so I'm like, hey, James, could you? He's like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. okay. Well, I asked him when he was here for my wife. Well, oh, that's, you have to. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. How, you're a smart man. It's a yes. good husband. There, uh, uh, I mean, he's so good looking. It's kind of for Ed. Well, okay, hang on. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> But hang on, we have a lot of barbecue talk and Net- we got to do NASCAR like, Craigslist ad. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, well, let's, well, just, well, let's just establish. You want me to recap. Let's just establish that on top of all that, you're like this huge, huge car nerd. I'm looking yeah. at this, this oh, yeah, thing yeah, you yeah, send yeah. me in terms of like a car think. list of uh, at least a dozen. It looks like that, those are current. That, oh, that's your own. Right. Okay, but apparently Johnny wants to talk about this. This uh, crisis. Dude, how do you get a job entering uh, for broadcasting? It, well, was it a broadcast? No, no it was. Oh, a, okay. It was in the marketing department, which yeah. turned out to be. Uh, you, have mar- you have a degree in marketing with correct. University of Georgia. That's yes. right. Go dogs. I worked okay. at the visitor center, and I've recently heard there's a picture of me on the wall. Oh boy! 
And I did an interview with UGA Magazine this week, and I asked the guy, could you just, I don't want to have a big head about this, but would you mind going by and confirming or denying <laughs> that? Because that was, when I was at the at the visitor center at UGA, there were two pictures on the wall of like people you would know. One was Herschel Walker, and the other is the actor that played Newman on Seinfeld, oh, no sure. who oh, oh, did great. two semesters and then was like, I've got to go to New York and make it. Those right, are the right, only right. people that you could recognize. So are you there? I don't know. He oh, hasn't written right. me back yet. Fingers all right, so crossed. if you're listening, if you're listening, this is something you're supposed to do. We're supposed to see whether our audience will do the thing. Oh, we yeah. Ask. If you live in uh, Georgia. Athens. In Athens. And yeah. you can go to the visitor center at UGA. Please do. And take a picture of Rutledge in there. Or the blank or the, space. Or the blank space where it should be. That I could Send be. it to us. We'll send you a hat or a t-shirt. So Thank this you. is this is great. Uh, this is a great lesson, though, because for years, there's, there's, there's a strip club here in L.A. called Jumbo's Clown Room that I, I, before I was writing about cars, I wrote an article about this female Someone owned... said the words yesterday at the Dodgers Yeah. Club. Yeah, I thought they were kidding. And your picture is hanging up in there. No, well, no, not my picture, but I wrote an article about it, and it was hanging on the wall. And you can just say review; you don't say article. No, it's not. It was an article. Okay. It, was, it was L.A. Alternative I read, Press. Read I, for the I, I wrote an article. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I, it, I, I, I wrote a thing about hey, here's here's a female owned strip club. That's pretty <clears> interesting. That the owner's yeah. a woman. Uh, anyways, for, for, it was on the wall, and for years I've been saying that. Every, anytime Jumbo's comes up, I'm like, you know, I have an article on the wall. And for various reasons, I went there a couple weeks ago, and it's no longer there. It's been replaced by like a like a Stella Artois ad or something. Wow! Yeah, so I asked if everyone was check. dressed as clowns because that's much funnier to me. But apparently not so. The, I, I the, sto- the story. The story <laughs> right. is uh, the story is her father, uh, Karen's father, when he was fourteen, ran away to join the circus for forty eight hours. Oh wow! And after that, everyone just called him Jumbo for the rest of his life. Even no though he, kidding. Like, <laughs> he just he literally joined the circus. What a moniker during huh? the depression for forty eight hours, and they did like it. Came home and Jumbo. So he opened up Jumbo's clown room and follow up question, and it's still there. Could he not cut it? He was fourteen. Yeah, I guess he couldn't cut it. Mm. Was he big? I don't know. Uh, did he have a, a half of his face was very hairy and the other half was not? Or yeah. did he have anything? I, I yeah. don't know. I could ask <clears throat> next time. I, I, it's okay. been about 15 Seven years. toes. Yeah. Anyway, so, anyway. You, so you – Craigslist. So you Craigslist. <laughs> uh, you're a graduate of UGA. You yeah. see an ad for the marketing department. You join. And then how many years later are you actually on – screen on TV. At a Basically the next year, a guy named Chris Long that was running the network who later went on to direct TV and now he runs a movie studio. Chris noticed that people would hang out with me at that stage when there was nothing going on. Cause I was like, I was like half DJ and I would get the crowds pumped up. And then I was also doing like marketing analysis, trying to figure out how can we make this experience better? Like I was trying to do real stuff too, but uh, Chris, real, noticed, real stuff is boring. Yeah, exactly. Chris <laughs> knows that fans would hang out with me right. and stay there when there wasn't anything going on. He was like, well, what do you want to do? I was like, well, I want to be on air. Uh, and so he basically gave me a shot the following year. But he's like, if you suck, you got to work for me the rest of the year. I was like, done. I'll do it. So uh, first thing I did was a scavenger hunt in the infield of Daytona. Uh, with that my, sounds dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> my buddy Kenny Wallace helped out, Jimmy Spencer. Uh, And that was for the Speed Channel, owned by Fox. And so that went well, and they kept letting me do more stuff. The kicker is a race fan loaded something onto YouTube illegally like a year later that turned out to be this thing that is what uh, John Hessling that was doing Top Gear saw. And it was me and John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazzard, and I spent the entire interview in a Charger calling him Bo, and I would um, not break that at all. And I was like, so so, uh, Daisy – that's not like your first cousin, right? And he was like, "That's an actress, Catherine Bach." I was like, "No, no, I'm talking about Daisy, though. She's not like, she's not like blood, blood, right? She's like distant." He'd be like, "Yeah." I was like, "Y'all ever go see a movie or wow, go out to so- dinner?" And a race fan loads that onto YouTube illegally, which is what got me the interview and the phone call. And of course, the whole time I'm doing. Like, I I didn't have an agent. There's no way I'm going to get this show. So I just approached it like, what a fun thing. I'll be able to be like, that guy was cool. He was a jerk. Were you a fan of Top Gear? Absolutely. Okay. So it didn't come out of the blue. You knew how big this was. You were like, well, this is great. And I also knew, the good news is I knew that I was going to get hated by a bunch of strangers. Because it's a little bit like when a a band that's huge in an underground scene blows up and they're on every commercial – Part of it was like that, but also I think people didn't realize we weren't trying to be the three of them. And it took them like Years. a year and a half before yeah. they were finally like, oh, they're really just three idiots. Yeah. They're not right. trying to be those three idiots. Right, right, just, right. Yeah. They're also three idiots. Well, it's like, it's like 
it's like being cast in Star Wars Episode One, right? After yeah. after four, five, six. Perfect, perfect. And so. it and again, it took people a little time to be like, oh, I can also like this. Yeah, yeah. And let's be honest, none of us ever punched anyone over cold cuts, and we're not terrible <laughs> human beings, as far as we know. You know this, this yeah, is, I love yet. Richard Hammond, yet. and yet. I love James yeah, exactly. May. I want to be yet. real clear. Yeah. Yeah. Yet is what you're trying to say. Right. You're saying you never know. Do you guys have any cold cuts? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, well, <laughs> the afternoon is young. <laughs> So, um, but, but did you think – so, okay, so you get on Top Gear. Did you think – well, actually, I want to back up a little bit. When the guy came to you and said, what do you want to do? You said, I want to be on TV. Why would you want to be on TV? And how would you know to say that to him? I, I knew when I was a kid. I, I okay. would stay up Saturday nights and watch um, Saturday Night Live with my parents, and I'd go to sleep dreaming about being Chris Farley. Oh. Uh, and I would wake up and watch CBS Sunday morning and think Bill Geist is the greatest <laughs> host I've ever seen. And so I think I kind of combined those two loves because Bill Geist would do this thing where he would go to the most obscure places and talk to people about uh, the artisanal pencil sharpener or a guy that grows mm-hmm. pumpkins that right. look like people. We had a guy in, in California named Huel Hauser. Yeah. And yeah. Huel, you know, it was California okay. Gold, yep. and he would like, oh, you – you you do forty nine er recreation. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, that's the greatest. Yeah. And that's Isn't and that's I think Huel did that same thing. They never made anybody feel so, bad right. for loving this thing that they love so much. Right. So that was like my big inspiration kind of growing up. So I the whole time was like, Yeah, I gotta I'm gonna be on TV. But is that bigger than that. cars? Was it always around cars? You, no, I, th- I think or? it's because I loved cars and I love that. And then when I found that link, I was like, Oh, well, I guess I'm gonna figure out how to make my way in NASCAR, but NASCAR is a super hard sport to yeah. to break into because so many people grow up in it. The culture is that like most of the people on air, it feels like have some sort of connection, connection race for sure. Family, and then here's that. me with like a bad mohawk at the time <laughs> that's trying to like lead the chuckle hut way. So it was there were some difficulties right. at times. Like people didn't totally get me the first time they put me on air for a live show. Um, scary moment for me. They're like, we need Mark Martin. Uh, in the show and I was like he was 36 in practice and they're like it's okay you can get him and I was like all right um I'll go knock on the door and I can feel myself like getting nervous in that moment and I said uh, uh Mr. Martin sir I'd like to uh talk to you about your week and he was like uh why do you want to talk to me about my week <laughs> and I said well how are you in practice he said I was 36 and I was like that's why <laughs> and I just held it and I waited and he smiled and he said, okay. And I was like, great. Because I wanted to know something different than how's your car, track conditions. Like, those are fine. But the reason that NASCAR fans love NASCAR is those drivers that put their lives on the line every single weekend, there's something in them that reminds them of themselves or what they want to be. And I was like, let's learn about that. Turns out, Mark Martin, what a bad mammer jammer. This dude works out today <laughs> still in blue jeans, right? Like original cut Levi's. Uh, he's no, out there. No stretching those. No, no, no lycra. <laughs> he was listening to like Gucci Mang when he's in the gym, and I'm like, this dude has so many layers to him, and we're only exploring like this much. So I just my thing was like, I want to talk to everybody about who they are. Mm. I can read. I know how your car did. So let's not ask that. And right. when it worked, I was like, oh man, this might just work. This yeah, is great. It's, it's funny you say that because because you know I, I've, I've seen I, I've seen your barbecue show. I, I've seen what, what's the barbecue show called? Uh, it was called American Barbecue Showdown. American Barbecue Showdown. So you know, I watched the whole thing. We've seen three seasons of The Floor Is Lava. Yes. Thank and you. I, and I do a little bit of projection in that. Well, I've I've done car shows. Sure. Like, could I? You know, and I, I I could not do what you do in hosting those because I'm not like a subject matter expert. So sure. even though I, I'm not maybe not that talented. As a host, like I know a lot about cars, so I can like if if I if I get lost, I just like well, you know, blah blah blah, and I have the knowledge. But like, it's it's elegant to watch you on the floor as lava because you know it's a it's a weird reality show. Absolutely. But like, again, like you're these like kind of some of them are pretty dopey, you know, like, right? You know what I mean? Like, because they they come up with their own shtick about why. Oh yeah, win. and it's like it's I'd just be like, you guys, come on. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> dude, it's a beautiful. I mean, I remember it's these, amazing to watch you do it. Is these, what I'm trying to well, say. thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think I've always been a little bit of a chameleon like that. Like even at like school, I didn't have like one friend group. I was friends with kind of everybody, mm-hmm. and I wasn't the coolest cat in town, and I wasn't the one that didn't talk to anybody. I was sort of somewhere in the middle, right? You know, but I made lots of friends, and I just always think everybody's got a story, right. and I think my job 
that I I think luckily I've been good at is trying to just lean into that kind of curiosity. Like when I when I went to NBC, I'm, I met with a guy named Jeff Binky, who's a great friend and, and had been a, a kind of a mentor in my life, and then a guy named Sam Flood. And Sam, who's running the, the network at the time, was like, so what can you do? <laughs> I was like, well, I can go anywhere and talk to anyone about anything. He's like, okay, well, what can't you do? I said, um, I can't wear khakis and I can't tuck my shirt in. <laughs> and as soon as I said that, I look up and I was like, oh, my God, they're both wearing khakis and their shirts are tucked in. I have, I have just right. insulted right. these guys I so can't bad. be losers like you. And yeah, I didn't yeah. mean it like that. I just meant like I can't go anywhere and not, not be corporate. me. Yeah. 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 And so they kind of laughed and he's like, okay. And so I've been, you know, I got to do, um, I've been with NBC Sports eight years doing stuff. I, I've been to three Olympics, four Olympics. Yeah. Like, it's insane to think well, of I'll, the things I've gotten to do, you know? But I think it's just from that same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you way, one, of, yeah. one of his superpowers, oh, yeah. I can tell you right now, is you are also, I, I'm picking up an insane networker. You have name, you have remembered the names of the people you work with at your very oh. first broadcast job. Yeah. First and last, and dropped EP executive producer names, like, Throughout so far, we're only like we're, we're like we're like fifteen <laughs> That's minutes really in. That's really funny. Yeah. Which is no, I which, don't which, mean to. No, which tells also, me that you also tells said, me that you're really good at at maintaining and keeping relationships, which is no doubt like helped you progress for sure. Career. You also said Speed Vision owned by Fox. <laughs> no, because like I think that's yeah. important. Like I don't think a lot right. of people realize. Well, I'm driving the number three car. The, the, you know, hats yeah, off let to me go, <laughs> go down this laundry list of yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting thing. I think part of the reason that I. I'm a person that thinks gratitude is the most important thing. So mm-hmm. I think part of the reason that I always try to carry those names and people with me is because I there's I'm there's no way I would be doing this without people that yep. believed yep, 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 me. And yep, you know, like yep, yep. I've outlasted so many different circles and cycles of things that I'm sure a lot of people would have bet against. Um and I just love to to make people smile. Cause you asked like how did you decide that? I just knew I was either gonna make TV work or I was going to go back to school and be a teacher. I wanted to feel like I was having mm. an impact on people in the world every single day. But I thought the TV was the best way that I could do that. So that's why I just I said I'm going to go make this work. But also, like, you know, I knew we were – I didn't want to move to L.A. and, like, wait tables and try to find, like, a project. I was like, if I've got to make this work, I'll let – you know, Rachel and the girls stay at home. I'll be the one to go and leave and be on planes and whatever. And so that was always what we did. But that means I hit like a million miles on Delta when I was like 27 or 28. And so I was, asked, I was 38 when I hit a million miles. You on know, Delta. if you've seen it, what is it? Up and not, not up in the air. Was that up, the movie? Up in the air. Yeah. yeah. There's this little part of you that's like, man, is it going to be a celebration? And then the other part of that movie, which is so sad, you're like, no, it, just as another number. It's just they give you luggage tags. Yeah, and, and they, I was like, they, oh, yeah. we got gosh. we got a couple of two million milers on our on our oh, staff. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, I think I'm, I'm getting there. I'm yeah. almost there. Pandemic messed me up. I'm an additive. <laughs> I'm 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 the worst because I'm like an I'm additive over a million miles. But I but early in my career I didn't stipulate oh, only flying one airline. Oh yeah. Oh so, I did. You know I did. Because that's time to get a hole. Jur- that's an a hole journalist move. By yeah, the way. Like, oh I'm sorry. I can't take the twelve thirty five. Look, Southwest is different for the record. I appreciate that people that do it frontier is a little bit Wild West to me, and then Spirit, listen, if you don't fight, don't fly Spirit. L- listen, I was one time... Unless they're a sponsor. I was flying, <laughs> I flew from like Mallorca to Madrid, and because we... Uh, no, no, Tenerife to Madrid, and so t- Ooh, Tenerife's fancy. a different Humble time ground. zone. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I was driving the new, uh, the 991.2. Oh, here we go. What else oh, there yes. it is. Yes. <clears throat> but anyway, fancy. there's a time zone change. So, so, sure. so Tenerife is on Portuguese, you know, G- GMT, and Madrid is... An hour later, your right. time. The lady who booked the trip, who you know lives in Atlanta, didn't know that. And oh gosh, yeah, it was a, and it was it was a charter flight to Madrid. Delta held a plane for me. No way, because I was because I was a million they miler. To fly and it shows. well, dude. So I'm like after that, I'm like now I'm okay. even more loyal because they, they literally held a seven eight seven. Did they send the Porsche for you though? No, no, but they yeah, sent see, seven. I'm not, I'm not on the tarmac. The one on the tarmac? No, but there were seven so Spanish fancy. ladies screaming, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, as I'm like slowly, <laughs> you know, fat guy running to the, <laughs> to the plane. So let's, um, let's, yeah. we kind of go back before we go forward. Uh, you're a UGA. You, um, I want to know about your car oh, yeah, interest yeah, and history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. Uh, where does the love of cars come from? from it comes parent? from my dad. Parent? Yeah. Okay. My dad grew up on Route 66 outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico, in a little town called Moriarty. 
and his dad had a had a company called Valley Motors, and it was one building with three different doors because I think he was a hustler, and he had <laughs> a John Deere um, International Harvester, uh, and then a Napa Auto Parts, but like they were different addresses but it's just open up to like the same building right right, right so right. i think because i don't know whether you could have at that yeah, time could you could have you a have, harvester and a deer i don't know like i think that's how he was just so smart grandpa bill was really he, he was awesome <laughs> so and he also had a wrecker business so my dad is seeing these cars come in that have been wrecked or, or, or whatever and he was like oh I'll, I'll buy it for 20 dollars and i'll clean it up this dude came through a hailstorm and had busted all these holes in the radiator i remember my dad telling me my dad just put the top down because it had been torn up Sold it with the top down. He had put some, like, silver seal in there. Thing was fine. He just told the guy, like, yeah, so it had been a little beat up. Here's what you need to know. And the guy's like, okay, my dad sells it for, like, $300. And he'd, Probably. you know, absolutely. So that was where his love of it came for. So we we one day got my dad to list every car he had had. And he started forgetting them at, like, probably 140 or 150 right? Yes. And this is all cars before he had kids. and Because, you know, again, he was turning them all the time. And I've probably, I feel like my number used to be, like, 120, 130. I've, I feel like I've probably passed 200. Jeez. And I don't mean to, but like the tag office now sends me a manila envelope <laughs> instead of individual Yikes. reminders. And uh, yeah, it's, it's well, hey, so look, that's where it came from. Where, uh, just uh, to pause on that one. How, what's registr- what are registration costs? What are they in oh, Atlanta? Because yeah. uh, if we had that many in California, yeah, we'd be, I just we'd got be, my. <clears throat> Bill for one of my cars and like seven hundred bucks or something. Way higher, really? Oh, the they're, they're sneaking yeah. this like ad valorem. They're putting extra taxes. They they had one. They got rid of it. At least where I am, and now that's back. So instead of just paying like your annual renewal, which is like twenty dollars, and then some <sighs> small amount of tax 20. for each one, right? <sighs> now they're like, oh, by the way, since you got that new car, uh, it's twenty five hundred dollars, and you're like, yeah, for. Whoa, Y'all aren't what, even stamping these anymore. 25, it's a sticker. What's twenty five hundred bucks? I just I got a uh, Stagia two hundred and sixty RS right hand oh, drive that. Yes, yes, wagon, yes. and that was like twenty six hundred dollars tax it's just wagon. to own the car. And you live in you live in, in, in Atlanta, Atlanta? Robert, in, in Georgia, yeah. in Georgia. Yeah, I know. Is that because it's it, it be, is that because it was imported like an import tax? I don't know if it was because it came from. I got it at Northeast Auto in uh, New Hampshire. Derek is a really cool cat. Y'all would it, love him. He sh- races. It shouldn't be. Of- it shouldn't be out of state. I agree. State. I agree. That's and yet, wild. anytime you buy something new like that, they just gouge. It's, you. it's a one time. Uh huh. Okay. They're oh, le- oh, yeah. I've, I've heard about that. They're okay. learning from California. Well, they really are. no, but remember, we you know Schwarzenegger became governor specifically because Gray Davis tripled the car tax. That yeah, we, we've never recalled a go- Democratic governor in California doesn't get recalled until you triple the car tax, and, and then that was like get out. And I remember because I remember I had a, I'm the governor now. <laughs> Why well, I, I don't I, like I, the taxes? Pretty good. I had bought a twenty five thousand dollar WRX, and I remember. Oh yeah, and I remember you know, and I STI rem- or non STI? Oh, this was in two thousand and two. So oh, no, it first was, year first bug year. eye. Yeah, Come yeah, on, bug eye, yeah. Was and it I, blue? I hope it was blue. Uh, the first one I had was black. My second one was blue. Ooh, was it that black? That's like a, a Java pearl. Like it looked a little. Br- it was black. Gold. Black. Okay. No, it was just. It was just. The, it was the. They added that color a little later. It was like a black gold. Yeah, still no, one of my this, favorite colors. No, no, no. This was first year. But I remember first time. It was my first expensive to me. Oh yeah. Back then, twenty five thousand was a lot. My first expensive new car had the Momo steering wheel on it there. Had so Momo. Fancy. Yeah. Um, and it, it, my first year of registration was like. Two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, that seems like a lot of money. Sure, right? Because my car before that was a Sentra. Yeah, it was, you know, it was not a lot of money. And then the next year, it was seven hundred some odd dollars oh. because it tripled. And I'm like, recall this mofo. Yeah, like get, get him, him out. out. Get him out. What a bastard! So, <laughs> wait, so you? But your your dad is from New Mexico, correct? Meets my mom in Alabama through a family friend. So that's so where we the, grew that's up where in the Birmingham. accent comes. Your dad doesn't have an accent. Well, George also not. has an accent. I, it's funny. I don't think I have an accent unless I really need to, and then I'll just slip into it like an old pair of jeans. You know what I mean? Well, that's like a. Texan. Well, sure. It's a little something. <laughs> Throw a hat on uh, some boots. It's called a Saturday you, night. You have the uh, Georgia, North Carolina, kind of slightly southern gentleman yeah. accent. You, don't you can tell to... I've had cheer wine or yes. sun drop soda. <laughs> you just there's yeah. a vibe about it. Yes, you had a moonshine dealer. My grandpa, my grandpa gave me my first car. It was an '81 Rabbit pickup, and because oh, he was thrifty, yeah. he got no options. It didn't have a radio. It didn't have air conditioner. He didn't pay like the ten dollar Volkswagen fee to have the vent windows 
They were glued <laughs> shut. What do you need them for? Yeah, exactly. And for it was smoking. so hot. We, my dad and I flew out in 93 and pulled that and like a 12-foot uh, sailboat back. But that he also gets. I don't know what he was doing with the sailboat. He clearly traded that for something, <laughs> and that was the longest car ride of my life because it would that thing would do sixty four, maybe sixty five with a tailwind. It was the four speed, but pulling that boat, we were all of fifty five across right. the country. Wow, no, and it was the kind of heat that like ju- you just sort of pass out, right. mm-hmm. you don't know it. So yep. that's how I got started. But I always, you know, I always believed that that car was something cooler. I did like. Sparkle rainbow tint on the back window because I thought that was cool. I got a big VW logo on the back window, and I found a uh, Pathfinder stereo at a garage sale. Put that in with some speakers. But, like, here's what I think. High What's cool is about, like, this new show, Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge, I think the same thing that I felt the day when I was 16 I think is what comes through the show, which is this connection with time and place and what cars allow us to be. Because when you got that O2 WX, number one, you thought, man, I'm doing it. This I I have made it in a sense. I've got this cool car. This is a car that we dreamed of having in the U.S. for years. Finally, we get it. You're one of the first ones to have that. Dude, well, that's I'll, I'll tell such you the, a moment in time. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about that. So it was Jamie Kipman, who uh, used to work for Automobile. Uh, he had, I remember he'd written like the first test of it. And I remember sitting in my apartment at the time reading it, and he kept comparing it to a 911, saying, like a 911 4S, saying it's a boxer engine, it's all wheel drive. And because it was such an amazing car in 2001, uh, the, you know, he's like, it's not much of a performance delta. Like it's a little slower, but not much. It really wasn't yeah. much slower then. And but I was like, eh, and I was just I was Mister Audi. I was so into Audis, and I wanted an S four. I wanted an S four wagon more than anything in the world. You and me both. And at the time, I had this ridiculous dot com job where I was making like six figures as a twenty five year old. Don't Amazing. Ask. Yeah, it was. It almost <laughs> ended. I can't believe I'm alive. I'll put it like that. So I went to the Audi dealer, and I was wearing like you know camo shorts and like an Alice Donut T shirt, and you know, and they wouldn't even look at me. I could not get. The Audi dealer, to, the salesman, to look sure. at me, right. and I walked. It was in the TO, and I walked to the Subaru dealership. I'm like, maybe this Kitman guy knows what he's talking about. And I drove it, and I'd driven my friend's S4, and I'm like, this is better. Yeah, I'm like this is because it, it was lighter, and it didn't have those crappy chain guides. All the problems with Audis. And I, I, remember I bought it, and I drove to the Audi dealership and pulled in. It just started honking, and I saw. And the guys came out that like you know wouldn't yeah. look at me, and it's just middle fingers up. And oh, I you did like, the pretty woman thing. I did. Good I literally you. did it, and I was like, I was Good like, I you. bought it cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is. And then I lost my job. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, I when I was at Georgia, I lost the Hope Scholarship, so I had to sell my car. Uh, to pay for school and then Ooh, had to like hustle. Rough. I was in a cover band and so I eventually got something Wait, different. What, you singer? You must be a singer. I was a, I was a drummer, but oh. I would come up halfway through and start rapping because okay. you know a little bit of that Atel <laughs> love. So, um, but here's what's funny. So the show at the core of it, we would take you and that in that O2 WRX yeah. and bring you back to that moment. We would have the car looking just like that, and we'd unveil it to you, and then you'd have a week with these three incredibly skilled like mechanics fabricators, artists, and you could turn that thing into anything that you want. You would then pimp that ride. Well, someone said it's kind of like pimp rides. Like, eh, I mean, I get I get for the masses why that's probably the easy way to explain it, but you always have to say it's Hot Wheels meets Pimp My Ride. You know, the, the well, I think pimp. Hot Wheels are so much bigger, bigger and different. Bigger. You know, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. think about them, what, what you can hold in your hand is really this feeling, which is like, I can Look, be anyone, I can go anywhere and do anything. Bro, I just turned 48, uh... The last time I went to the grocery store, for no reason whatsoever, I bought 12 Hot Wheels. Yes, I you have not, to. I did not have my six-year-old with me. I love it. it I do, every it, time I'm at Target, I, I hit the lane every it, single it time. It was new Hot Wheels day, and I'm like, yes. yep, 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 yep. Still the most attainable toy, I think, on the planet. It doesn't know economic conditions. It doesn't know class structure. Like It's just right there. But I would sit there and play with them and be like, man, one day I'm going to have a different car that I can drive every single day. And it's like truly been this through point in my life, which I think you guys would get and appreciate. Like that's what I've, I have just always been that guy and it's worked. And now I get to be the person that gets to be sort of the, the host that the, I'm like the tour guide. Well, let's talk. We we, 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 we we should talk about this show. What did you drive? What did you drive in high school? And 81 take, rabbit pickup till it blew you, up. Did, that's what you took your driver's license to? Yes. Then? Dropped my dad off, came home nine hours later, never left my town, no radio, just drove. Never. I, I don't know 
you know, you think about those days when you were so happy of just like, there's nothing, and I was just beaming. Mm. Just four gears of glory all day. <laughs> that t- that took you to UGA. <clears throat> that no, that didn't make it. It uh, <laughs> got some bad diesel, and I don't know if the head went, but it just never recovered. Uh, I got my mom's Astro for like three months. Oh wow! I went through uh, one right rear tire in that time, and that was a real learning moment. My dad was very kind, but I, he was like, "Hey, what happened?" I was like, "Oh, this thing must be out of alignment." And he was like, "Son, we're gonna." We're going to talk about how cars work today. <laughs> right. All four turns tires. Out, turns out our high school had this real uphill right turn where you, if you had anything rear wheel drive, you left school with that tire blazing. So I was one wheel peeling every single day out of that parking lot. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I love the Astro. It was, a, it, was a, it was a good time. But ended up with a 93 Cabriolet. Volkswagen. Back yeah, which Volkswagen. was definitely seen as like a, a girl's car at that time. But I always loved him. I put a big. What does a uh, friend call it? Uh, a basket? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny because it's got <laughs> yeah, the it's handle. Got the handle. <laughs> oh, I've yes, never heard yes. that. Shout out Camisa. Shout out James Camisa. <laughs> I still love him. There's a big VW meet in Helen, Georgia this weekend. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I put like European stripes on it. Uh, it had a three chamber Flowmaster, which I thought was like a big thing at the time, right? It did not sound good. And no. it didn't sound loud, but I didn't want it to sound terrible because that had the little 1.8. It was so slow. It would occasionally be faster than like that a was, Civic that, EX. That, that was the 8-valve 1.8. Yes. Yeah, 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 but I put a bandpass, two two Rockford Fosgate 8s <laughs> in a bandpass <laughs> box in the truck. And I tell you what, Master P would really yeah. shake the mirrors in that thing. <laughs> that I mean, look, I, the, the Cabriolet, I mean, you know, Giagiaro at his very, very best, right? I mean, it's just... You know, yes, you lose the C pillar, but like, what a gorgeous, it was timeless. gorgeous car! It's still yeah, cool. It still car. is good looking. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's say, okay, so you got the the Cabriolet, and you now are over two hundred in, in two hundred cars that you've owned. Where, where is that? Like, is that one, two, three, four? We just covered, yeah, roughly. Okay, so then the next question is: You go through college, you land at NASCAR, you end up on. Uh, when did you think you had arrived? Like, oh, man, I'm making it. And then, and what, what was your first? What was splurge? that? What was the splurge? Um, I don't know if I ever hit that for the record. I don't, because it's, no, it's just, this industry is so difficult and it's so constant. And so you don't, I don't know if I ever had that feeling of like, oh man. Well, if I I can break the fourth wall for a minute, I I tried out for the Hot Wheels show and, uh, then they, they told me what they were going to pay and it wasn't for what you're doing. It was for, (laughs) it was for, uh one of the other people gotcha and i'm like come on <laughs> Dude, it's it's, it's like, hard there's I mean, not there's a lot no... of money it's crazy <clears throat> my, my first year traveling with nascar for speed i think i made 23 grand yeah how, which, how old are you uh i'm 43 how old were you for that for i that was show? 23 yeah my first... no sorry i was 20 i was 05 so i would have been 25 my first job teaching i taught high school twenty nine thousand dollars in california <laughs> And it, it's for the record, that's hard to live on. Like yeah. we could have delivered pizza. This was before like Uber Eats or anything. Like if we were delivering pizza, we would have felt like kings compared yeah. to that, yeah. right? No, look, my first job out of college, uh, I was making twenty five thousand dollars a year in San Francisco. It, you know, and then I remember I, I was like, I went to my boss and I was like crying. I'm like, I can't pay rent. I just, I can't, you know. So he's like, he gave me, you know, I got suddenly I was making thirty thousand, and somehow that was enough to pay rent. Sure, thirty thousand a year. Oh, you know, and uh, yeah, it's 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 great. But but my my point is that like, yes, you're on TV, but I sort of know what like. Unscripted well, I'm going to take the counterpoint pays. and say that this list I'm looking at, which includes a twenty two thousand twenty two <laughs> Toyota GR Supra mm-hmm. and a twenty twenty Toyota Santa Minivan, which we're going to talk about, yeah, and a Nissan Outex to Gia. Uh, wagon. I know it's cheap in Georgia. Isn't it? He's not paying. He's not paying California mortgage. When, what was it? What was the big? What was the big? Uh, the big. I arrived. I don't know. It uh, might have been um, during Top Gear. We drove the CTSV, and I love the wagon. I've always been into wagons. Uh, I'm leaving the same. Rio Olympics. It's 2016. It's a red eye flight, and it's after midnight as we're about to take off. And this guy going down the plane's like, "Hey, I bought my car because of you." And I had to really muster up the energy. To be like, oh man, that's cool. That's cool. And then I was like, you gotta ask him. You gotta ask him. I was like, what'd you, what'd you get? And he's like, oh, I got a CTSV wagon. I was like, oh, good for you, man. I loved it. He's like, yeah, but I just leased it. And I was like, really? What color is it? And he's like, it's it's white. I was like, oh, is it a uh, is it manual or automatic? He's like, oh, six feet, six feet. I was like, oh. did you get the Recaros? He's like, yeah, of course I got the Recaros. <laughs> 
how many miles are out at 32? I was like, uh, can I get your email? Uh, <laughs> He's like, yeah. So I, I knew he had gotten it from uh, Rick Hendricks' dealership in Kansas City. I called my buddy Steve Letarte, who was Dale Jr.'s crew chief, and I was like, hey, man, do you know anyone? And now that's the racing side. I know they're totally different. But I was like, can you help me find someone? He's like, yeah. So they find this dude, um, and they find the car, and so they start trying to talk to him. Well, payoff was crazy. It was like... It was like 33 or something, which those cars at the time, you know, they came out and they're for if you didn't. I mean, they were 70, high 70s, right? Which is insane. Um, And it's 2016 now. The cars are 2013. And so we start going back and forth. And the dude, the actual guy that owned the car, figures out that the payoff's way less than he thought. So he's like, hey, man, I could sell it to you next week for 50. And I was like, wait, what? I, now I'm getting hustled. No, yeah. I was like, yeah, I want 33. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, the, the I'm talking to the dealership. They're gonna get. And he's like, no, okay, all right. Well, fine. I'm gonna sell it then. I was like, okay. <sighs> Two days later, he's like, all right, 49 next week. It's the best I can do. And I was like, dude, I already told these people I'm gonna buy a car from them. It's cool. Yeah, I'll get a different of not. Well, I guess he was trying to get an M3, and was trying to work a deal. So eventually, they worked the deal. And I thought, man, this guy's got to be driving this thing like a rental car. It's the only time I've ever done an extended warranty in my life, and I was really happy I did. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, And just had a few little things replaced, but I've loved that car. It's still like the baby. So I think that was that time for me of, like, I've I've never tried to splurge on stuff. Um, And it's funny. I've been a Toyota partner proudly since uh, probably 2011. Back then, actually, before that, because they would have me do stuff at the racetrack sometimes, and they didn't necessarily have a budget, but they would say, like, hey, could you come by? And, and real quick, and you, you, were, you got involved with Toyota through NASCAR. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, I've been a Toyota fan uh, my whole life because I could always buy – I could afford to get them, work on them, sell them. Like, it just – you know, it's easy to be. So yeah. um, I bought a 2008 Tundra. That was the first new car I ever bought. So I thought, like, man, this is exciting. Right, right. And they would ask me to do stuff at the racetrack for them, and I was like, um, "Could you could you trade me for some of the TRD parts?" And they're like, "Sure." <laughs> so I had those TRD twenty yeah, twos, the yeah. big brake kit. Um, Magnaflow had sent me an exhaust for that one, but like I felt like, man, I'm, I'm like in the industry. This is so exciting. So that was like when I first started doing stuff with them, and then I eventually got the chance to do the pro celebrity race, um, and I ended up with my race car because they went from the Scion TC. To the FRS. Well, right. I showed up as the guy on the biggest car show at the time in the U.S., and I did not want to wreck out like that same guy. So I drove pretty conservatively. I qualified fourth. I finished fifth behind Frederick Osbo because we we're going down the back stretch on the last lap. I am having the time of my life because I watched that race as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the one where you saw people for movies and TV. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. was right. this was the coolest thing I've ever done. And I am waving to Frederick <laughs> Osbo going down the back stretch, who is one of the greatest drifters right. in the world of precision champion, drivers. Right. But he's also paid by Toyota. And I'm over here just like, hey! And I realized he's not seeing me. He's really focused he's racing. here. And I was yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what? I'm just going gonna, gonna to get behind Frederick because this, fourth or fifth won't matter to me. Right. So I get behind him. We finish the race. Should have pit, pit, <clears> pit, yeah, him. pit maneuvered. Should have, right? Yeah, yeah. Grandstands would have loved that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he I, I drifted right out of it. I hear that the FRS is coming, and I'm like, please, if you guys do this next year, I promise I will. I will represent. I I will show you what I can do. This is my kind of car. And they're like, all right. And uh, Les Unger, who was running at the time, Paul Doschel, they invite me and they say, "Yeah, you can come back." Well, I won the pole and the race. The pole won twenty five grand. Oh, nice for Victory Junction, which is this great camp in North Carolina that my friend Kyle Petty started in honor of his son Adam. But the, yeah. the winning that race was the first time people were like, "Oh, I thought you sucked at driving." Right. Well, I was they, like, "Well, Tanner kicks they, my butt they at set, everything." They set you up. For th- they set you up for that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was yeah, like, yeah, "Come yeah, on, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. my fault." But so I've been doing stuff with them sure. uh, forever, which is also why I have so many fun Toyotas at the house. Let me. Let me. Uh, okay. So let's let's uh, we're gonna dig deep here because yeah, you got this really down home, folksy, good natured demeanor. I think it's a scam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. We're gonna get to it. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna put you on the spider. No, I, I think um, you. <laughs> it, I think it's clear you entered NASCAR at a time when they were looking to expand. Like they're, sure. they're trying to find a younger demographic, so they find this guy kind of past said, the 2000s wave. Yes, said so you got a you got a Mohawk right. and you're out there trying to do do the deal right. But also at the same time as Toyota's has entered, right? right? So that's your and entry. that too. For the record, that was a huge part of my success. Not only in the sport with the brand, 
Um, and I don't want to interrupt what you're doing, but there was a guy named Ed Laukas who was at the yes. time in charge of marketing for Toyota. Yep. And Speed he just didn't, retired. Ed. Yes, he yes. did. And I love Ed. Speed didn't really know what they wanted to do with me. They just knew they didn't want me to do it somewhere else. They're like, we're not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got this thing. We don't know what it is. Well, Ed saw that every opportunity that they brought with Toyota, I would go after it and go try to create something that was really fun that didn't feel like a commercial. Because I think, you know, being a, a an Ivan Stewart fan, it's easy to love Toyota and motorsports. Sure. I got why there was – the sort of feeling of these like barriers of, of entry for people like, oh, what are they doing in NASCAR? I was like, oh, they're going to win. You just give them time. Like they're going to they're going to approach us the way they do everything. Well, Ed kept telling Speed, like, you got to keep this guy around. We love him. He makes stuff fun. And so their very first thing we did was the sponsifier. And so Ed's also one of those What's guys. The sponsifier? It was this idea that you could make the paint job for one of the cars. And so it was like a it was like a. Kind of before apps, honestly, but you'd go on the website and you'd pick out all this different stuff. So, like, okay, okay. Kyle Busch drove a car that had kittens all over it. Oh, yeah, I remember and that. And, like, yeah, rainbows. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But that was, that was such a big thing to have someone that was so high up at a company right. to, to go out and say, hey, we like this guy. We love what he's doing. And that was one of those things that kept me and propelled me further and further because Toyota is one of the biggest, you know, advertisers in the the world, and especially for how many people they employ here. Like, it's been such a cool thing to to get to work with them, to represent them all over the world. But Ed's one of those guys that also, like, when NBC was talking to me, Ed's one of those guys that without me knowing picks up the phone and says, this is our guy. We're going to we're gonna support him, uh, and we want to do more stuff. And so I, I do think, I mean, all that stuff is, is so important because now Jack Hollis does that for me right. in the same way. Well, let me ask you, that there's, as a guy who's, who's done a lot in motorsports in the South and, and with NASCAR and all of the whatever uh, notions that come with that, sh- surely it, have you received any, any blowback? Are you like, hey, why are you there? Are you, you know, the, the Ford and Chevy guys are like, what, what's going on? Sure. Or, you know, what, what, what's that? How's that been like? I mean, it's a lot like the lunch lunchroom in eighth grade. Like it's <laughs> honestly like the, you know the internet's such a dark place. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. In yeah. how it gives people yes, a, yes. a voice, but we're, no different. We're, we're experts, <laughs> y'all know. So like, I don't know yes. if it was it wasn't Jalopnik. Uh, someone ran a picture the day they announced Top Gear and who the hosts were. I had to like tell my mom, "Don't look on the internet today. Right, it's right, going to be course. great. Don't worry." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they picked this picture. They used to um, require me to wear a tuxedo to the NASCAR banquet. And respectfully, I love the sport, but when 30% or 40% of your audience doesn't wear a shirt to the race, right. I just don't think I need to wear a tuxedo <laughs> Fair enough. to celebrate. I right. was like, I just feel like this gets lost. It's not about me. It's yeah. about these people. Let right. them dress. I'll wear a suit. But like, so I went and rented this pink tuxedo in Vegas at a costume store. And that's what I'm wearing, and they chose that picture when these guys are like, who's this idiot? Right. So they put that on the release. But and it's like you said, it's a, it's a, like a can't-win situation. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, this is this is weird. But so there were definitely moments being in the South where people would say, like, well, why do you like Toyota so much? And I'm like, well, I picked it on Top Gear. We were doing this American Truck Challenge, and they're like, do you want a Silverado or do you want a um, the GMC, whatever yeah. the yeah, yeah. other one? I was like, Sierra. oh, yeah, Sierra. I was like, oh, I want a uh, Tundra. And they were like, well, that's not an American truck. I was like, by God, it is. Go tell that plant in Texas it's not an American truck. And so I chose that, and Toyota Racing like pulled one out of the line for me. They used that chocolate brown one. It was the only truck that made it in that show, by the way. Tanner's King, the King Ranch, which I think I referred to as the Queen Ranch because I didn't love the interiors. <laughs> really bad on that one. You, you, don't, like, Adam, you don't like fake uh, oh, barbed wire? It was so molded, molded Adam murdered wire? That, that Dodge Ram, and it was different. Then he came back with his arm broken. So, like, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think <laughs> I can think in the same way. The Internet and, and yeah. people in the South, it's all kind of the same thing. It's really just I've never been affected by other people's insecurities, and that – Look, really drives them crazy. Look, I mean, you got a Chinese guy and a Jewish guy hosting a show about EVs. Trust me, we get the hate. We yeah, get the- y'all know <laughs> well, it's real. So, so where uh, is there? Are we? Yeah. Are we? Are we? Uh, and believe me, I, I hope. I hope I didn't like miscast. Um, you know, uh, the South. Uh, oh no, uh, NASCAR fans. But are we? Uh, are we beyond that? Like, you know, for for the long I think time, so. Like, is is Toyota accepted within, within the community? Like, yeah, and and they do so much in different levels of of racing too. That, like, they're also the only group that is out there trying to really foster younger talent, right? Like, whether it's Bubba Wallace, Haley Deegan, 
um, Kyle Larson, like any superstar you can think of, Toyota was the group that was like, hey, we see this talent. We want to grow it. Because the other big three or now big two that are out there just don't have that same level of interest. So they just try to pluck them up when they right. can in different gaps. But um, yeah, Toyota's, they're fascinating because, you know, they're, they're, they're obsessed with, you know, they're F1 for a long time. They're obsessed with like Le Mans. You know, you know, like the amount of money they spent to win that first race, like it's in the well, now, billions. Well, now they're all yeah. they've been they've been all you know Gazoo Racing, yeah. Like they've GM GRMN. They're like the only. It's so weird now. You can point to Toyota as being like this performance brand because yeah. they have they right. have FRS, they have Supra, and you can like debate like, well, they they did that with Subaru and that one with BMW, they're still but doing it's like. It. They're still doing it. I just want to be be clear. I've battled that thing so many times. We don't deserve the FRS or the BRZ, and really the Z4 shouldn't exist either. But the fact that these companies want to come together and make anything that's fun for us to drive, I just – every time someone said nice BMW when I was in my Supra, I was like, that's so funny. Right. Who wrote that? That's right. really good material. Like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. rad car. Also, drive one. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, hey, look, I love uh, them. You know, I I think I told you this, but you know, my next car is a Toyota. I'm I'm selling my Alpha to buy or not selling. You get a GR up. Corolla. GR Corolla. Oh, baby. mine just I, made it to the port. It's I, on its way I, to. I put the Texas. order in. I put all right. the order in. Two You're gonna love ago. it. Oh, so, I, I've driven it. I love so it. I love fun. it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I want to dive yeah. into all the cars you have, but let's use the moment because we're talking about Toyota to sort of turn it on its head a little bit and say, look, this podcast is ostensibly about. Uh, electrification, the future of the of the automobile. Well, Toyota, okay. future of racing, future of NASCAR. Toyota's taken so. um, quite a beating uh, recently because they seem to be a little bit slow on the full battery or electric train. Akio, before he retired, was really making a hail mary about how uh, it's it's hybrids. You know, one of his biggest points was, you know, for every full battery electric car that we make, I can make four hybrids. Or just ten, ba- or, or ten, yeah, yeah, just based on the battery size, right? So. And what? I personally loved that. Like, I love that one day it comes out, hey, they're behind. And Akio's like, no, no, we're not behind. We're doing exactly what we set out to do and why. And then people are like, oh, they're geniuses. It's such a weird – and y'all know, like, it's a weird spot to be in. Well, are they geniuses? What, where is Rutledge <clears throat> on – because I'm looking at your car list. And, again, I got Supra on here. I got two Supras. I got a 93 and a 2022. I got a Toyota pickup with a 1JZ. Yeah, player. Suzuki, a K5 Blazer, uh, a Grumman – Step van with an SRTA charger swap, a Buick Roadmaster, a Corolla, mm-hmm. a Nissan Stagia. Uh, it's a JDM wagon. Ed just likes reading things wagon. off his computer. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And uh, Sienna <laughs> hybrid minivan and your double Ooh. cab pickup truck. No EVs. Do you have a lot of? Have you bought an EV? Well, the Sienna is a well, but it's the a EV, hybrid, full, right. full EV, full battery electric. I do not. Okay. So you've spent, experienced. Spent any them. time driving a Tesla Model Three? I've, any I've driven a couple of Teslas. Okay. Um, they're fine. They're they're uh, the hardest part for me is that same battle that I think exists in um, racing when we show stuff on TV. Like, how do you get the sensation of speed of a car doing two hundred miles an hour at the Indy five hundred? You make people go. You make people go. Yeah. So I think for me, I've I. It's not that I've not been a fan of EVs. I definitely know they're coming. I know that's the the future. I'm just not in one of those spots where I'm not a person that. Um, I'm not into politics. I don't follow people that I think are crazy narcissists in any kind of category of the world. Who might you be talking about? So it's hard for me to get behind certain <laughs> cult groups of, of people. Right, right, right. Um, but what I do think is that I think Toyota has done a really brilliant job of A, making cars that are really fun to drive and bring passion back after they were criticized for so long of making stuff that was, like, really vanilla. Like the, the GR Corolla, my my new circuit edition – just got here last week, uh-huh. and I don't know if I've ever been more excited about a car. The, have, the, you, have you driven? Yes. I mean, it's unbelievable. Incredible. What a great car. Look, if you if you had a time <laughs> machine and you went back you know, 10 years ago and you said, Johnny, you're going to own a bright yellow electric pickup truck, I'd be like, that's within the realm of possibility. And you said, you're going to get rid of an Alfa Romeo in favor of a Toyota Corolla. I'd be like, you're lying. There's no way. There's literally no way that could happen. Yeah. I would never buy a Corolla. I despise them, but... Uh, I drove this thing. Uh, I'm, I literally put my order in two weeks ago. I was. I got to yeah, love it. Oh, so, I, wait, I, so the shade you're throwing at Tesla aside, though, Rutledge, <laughs> are you saying? I, was doing are you, are you, I do drive an electric vehicle every single day. Your your minivan. No, I have a club car precedent, and I love it. <laughs> I live in a town. I live in Peachtree City, Georgia, which is a town built 
on a hundred miles of golf cart path, three big golf courses. And so every single day that I'm home, I'll get on the golf cart and go somewhere and do something. And, uh, and I love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful do you, ride. Do you golf? I do. Not well, but I'm fun out there. Oh, I have well, a good time. I bet time. you're fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I buy enough cheap balls that I don't. <laughs> okay. Like if you don't hear glass break, great day. Right. So, right. 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 So you are an admitted EV fan. It's Absolutely. Just, it's just a, a, the kind that most people. Without doors. Uh, right. <laughs> Most people have known for a long time to, to drive around on the, right, on the links on Sunday. So, so I was just going to ask. So, are, are you saying that the the uh, an EV for the family, a road, a road street legal EV, is not it's not inevitable for the Wood family? <laughs> Cracks like, himself up. Oh I, no! I think I think eventually we we all will. I I definitely hope that. I think what's tough is that sometimes the sort of what I would refer to as jargon get that gets thrown around by people. Y'all know we've got to get the infrastructure to where it can support all of these things in the future. It's definitely not there. Following you for about five minutes, you get that feeling of like, man, this is there are times when it feels <laughs> punishing. Oh, yeah. It yes. feels like you've been singled out for trying to do something that on paper is the responsible, smart, looking forward to the future thing. Right. As a guy that was born on Earth Day, universally, I'm still – I've not heard anyone come up with a great solution about what happens with these batteries. I think if the three of us can be those people that figure out how to turn it into something great, we will be those next uh, insane narcissists that people follow to the end of the Earth. Right. So maybe we should put more focus on that. But uh, that's the one component that I'm always like, oh. We're just not going to talk about that. Oh, oh, well, battery, battery I mean, recycling is yeah. Look, is a I thing, mean, look, so. I, I, I will if I may get on my high horse for a moment here. Oh. Uh, batteries, you know, lithium is ninety nine point nine percent recyclable, just like steel. It's a metal. It's just a metal. Right. It's, it's not that hard. There's, there's no profit motive to do it at the moment, but that that's coming. Well, there is. So, well, so Tesla's former t- former Tesla CTO J B Straubel has uh, has a uh, Redwood Materials. It's their startup, all about yes. scaling it, it, up. It, 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 these these kinds of batteries, yeah. industrial batteries, every kind, even like yeah. the, the battery power tools, so that we can uh, handle both the waste issue, but also uh, build a business around it. So. Yeah, and then also the great thing that people do with batteries is you stick them at the bottom of a windmill, and then they just fill up. You know, and you, you, you repurpose them, and now it, it, yeah. the solar panels on your house charge a battery, and now you have your own little power sure. station. Right. The car, the, when these things, that's that's true. Like, when they've outlived their useful life as a powering a car, there's still a ton of energy in them, and they actually make a lot of sense as a static power supply. Oh, yeah. and, and the other thing is, like, the uh, the fact that they degrade has been, it, it's not your cell phone. It's been greatly exaggerated. And like, right. You know, I want to actually dig through, but Tesla put out a study that after 10 years, a Model S battery is has over 90% of its capacity. Wow. So that's pretty good. You know, now right. Tesla put that out about Tesla's product. I'm very suspicious of anything that company says for a lot of reasons, but I haven't seen anything that really has refuted it. And can I just know, make one joke? Uh, make 10. Did y'all see that cyber truck outside? <laughs> me neither. Know, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, me neither. Is, we were just, we were just, yeah. Talking about it. Yeah. So it sounds like you're not buying a cyber truck anytime. I don't soon. think anyone is, but <laughs> I hope when they make it, it's not so ugly. I'm, I'm going to leave his name out of it because we, I think it was Your off truck the record. Your truck awesome. My truck is awesome. But we, it was off the record and we might have had like nine whiskeys. But there was a guy <laughs> who was really adamantly explaining to me the other night that cyber truck's coming and it's coming sooner than you think. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, sooner, um, sooner where was he on January sixth? Right, you know, <laughs> everyone's got well, a story. I, 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 so I kept saying, "I'm like, what's so? What's the delay? I mean, this is like before the pandemic. We saw the Cybertruck. They know how to build cars. That you know, like the model. By the way, the Model Y, third best selling car on Earth. Yeah, that's best selling car in California. Best selling car in California. Yeah, but, that, but that's like, globally. That's yeah, crazy. Just, yes, nobody saw that coming. Yeah, uh, but I don't know why they can't build the truck. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I have my theories. Well, we did, we know a little bit. Like apparently, when Rivian, when your truck came out, Tesla had to go back to the drawing board because they initially said Cybertruck. Well, they didn't announce it, but the assumption was they were going to use the Tesla Model S Plaid powertrain, which is three motors, three motors yeah. to make this truck. And then Rivian's like, "Mic drop. We got four, four motors. motors. <laughs> we got 835 horsepower. We got 900. How much? 900. 908 pound feet of torque. 908 yeah. pound feet of torque. So yeah. I think the Tesla guys are like, hmm, looks like we got to put another. That's motor part. What I'm what I keep hearing again and again and again is like, there's a very good reason why the only company that ever did stainless steel body panels before was 
DeLorean, who quickly went out of business for a right. lot of reasons. But is that stamping out the steel panels is like very it's I much think harder. It's, here's what I think universally. Sometimes when people have really wild ideas, they sometimes find a hill to die on that someone else would have been like, hey, if you just move over two feet, the hill's totally fine. It's actually not a hill. It's just a little plateau. Uh, Musk has made a career out of that. I mean, like, yeah. you know, like, you know, we know he almost bankrupted Tesla by insisting – the Falcon doors were really hard to do on the Model X, but that's not the hard part. The hard part was the middle seats had a single post instead of two posts. Yeah. So, like, to make – I'll just do this for the people on camera. To make this stable with a 200-pound person sitting on it's really hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With two posts, it's really easy. But four, par- four. apparently – Four he, attachment points versus one. Apparently, he has, quote-unquote, big feet, and he wanted to be able to stick – sitting in the third row, he wanted both his feet to fit. And that almost bankrupted Tesla. Yeah, again, what a clear. weird <laughs> hill to die on. Pretty clear right? he's got big feet. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the kids he has. Well. That's, that's a terrible joke. Yeah, I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah. But and, I, know, I mean, we've yeah. seen other – it's not like they're the only one to do that, to be fair. We've seen other manufacturers pick, like, this one thing. We're going to really yep. hold on to this. And then later you just want to be like, hey – that seemed weird. Was that worth it? Because I feel like you ran off everybody in the meantime. I was reading a story about the Fiero, and um, because they decided to make it plastic and not what the Corvettes are fiberglass, right. but they were going to make it actually plastic, and they wound up patenting four different plastics to make this thing not melt. But that like that ran so over budget that, oh, that, sure. that ruined the rest of the Fiero. For a long time. They finally got it right. Then they Which, by it. the way, looking back, what a cool car, oh, right? Yeah. Like, oh. if it hadn't been so hard to work on, I think they would have done <laughs> Or they could have made it reliable. Yeah, that would have helped, could have made it fast. Not, not catch on fire. I love that car. Nice. I, used to, I used to draw pictures of that car as a kid because it had, like, yes. it was, like, oh. the coolest profile. It was like, like an arrow. Like, this, yeah. is like, this is like an American Ferrari. It was, I had a buddy in high school that had one, and he turned the exhaust and, and put, like, I think it was a... Uh, was it Anza had the little twin tip that looked like a Ferrari, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or it had like this Monza style tip, but it was just off of the the, <laughs> the right. manifold, and oh, and cool. he would throw flames on that. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Now it was the four cylinder like Iron Duke. It was Iron slow Duke. as molasses, yeah. but man, it looked cool with the flames coming out right. of the back. Right. Such a such a cool. Car. But it, but again, it was like this this because that's how they sold it. Was like, oh, we're building this safety car of the future. Like, right now, it's I have owned be a Brooklyn, so I just want to oh, know you safety did have a car. Brooklyn? Yeah. What a man! What a <laughs> weird car! It was a gift. I go wouldn't on, have paid go for on. it. Well, how go much on. are they worth? Yeah, uh, I think I got twenty five hundred <laughs> bucks for it when I sold it. I sold it to my friend's son. Uh, oh. Chad bought it, and uh, the motor mount went out like two days later, and it just like. But it was that's one of those cars you get in. And you're like, I I feel what you were going for. You were trying to make something fun and different and safe. But then you're like, there's no way in 74 or whatever that first year, there's no way anyone got out of this car and went, awesome. Right. This I mean, was awesome. I mean, look, like there, there's a book. Uh, uh, it's called Hugo, the, the story of the worst car ever made. But it's really a story about Malcolm Bricklin. Absolutely. Like, dude, dude Hugo is just a little he part touched. of it. Well, oh, everything turned to. <laughs> it was weird. He didn't have great luck, but like the the micro van that he got here and yeah. the three sixty Subarus that he got here, like yeah, he brought that, the that, first. He did. He got K cars into the U S. and people are like, "That's fine." Yeah, a strong fart would wreck oh, one of those cars. Oh yeah, right? like well, I mean, it was it was the book is incredible, but like basically. You know, the Brooklyn was like, oh, Nova, the Nova Scotia government needs jo- – not Nova Scotia, uh, New Brunswick – Yeah, uh, needs jobs. They need a jobs program. And he's like, ah, I got I got a, a safety Here's an car. idea. A new Detroit. And it was – I mean, and the, the chapter in the book that talks about like – you know, one of the common problems was the Bricklands would show up with the keys locked inside of them, oh. and so the first thing that happened was they'd have to break the glass because they they'd like they had like a universal lock at the factory which they wouldn't give to the truck drivers, and so they had to like first thing that happened to the brand new car you had to break the window to get it off the truck to get the key out. Like just just stuff like failure that. failure from the start, yeah, right? Yeah, just absolutely. Failure. I can't believe you had a Brooklyn. That's yeah, so cool. that's my keychain. Was, still, was I kept it, that. Was it that weird like clay color? Mine was orange. Yeah, oh, the safe orange. orange. Oh, but the way safe, my buddy Eric that gave it to me, the way he had parked it at his house, uh, it only got <laughs> sun on half of it, so it was literally like a line <laughs> just off center that was bright, and one was oh, dull. Perfect, fun well, car, shag carpet. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, wow, that's, a, that's amazing.
That's that's great. You still thinking about the the Sienna? You well, want to talk I, about? So well, well Sun I, Kang here talking about his do, really made my heart happy. And when he was really on the show me, yeah. as a as a guest host, we yeah, talked more about I, it. I I just I think minivans. You know well, what Carl Lagerfeld said about sweatpants, right? It just yeah. it just means you've given up. And oh, that's come what, on. That's how I feel about minivans. Oh, I but but you okay? So you mentioned though you mentioned both uh, Sung and your minivan. So let's talk about that and Sung in, in the context of your of your new show. But you're so your day. First oh, of all, yeah, he's on the show. Yeah. First, yeah. So first of all, you Great are guy. in Terry Cruz. You just you just called it uh, Peachtree, Georgia. Peachtree City. Yep. Peachtree City, which is a suburb of At- of uh, Atlanta. Correct. Okay. So like, if I land in the ATL, how far from the airport? I'm 30 from? minutes straight south of you. Is that where's uh <laughs> where's the place everybody goes to for the bar? The bars in um... Buckhead. Buckhead. How far? Oh, that's you? north. Okay. So, so I'm so, like uh, 45 uh, minutes from downtown. Gotcha. Uh, and then outside, how many days of a year are you traveling? What'd you say? Great question. I don't add them up. I, I'm not as much as I was. Hot but. Wheels was in a different country, wasn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. shot that out of the US two and a half months. Um, and that's wild, but uh, we had a great time. What a great city. I only got to drive once. <laughs> they have one of my friends, one of the EPs, um, Andy, um, got on Turo and got a C63 AMG yes. for like 50 bucks a day. Awesome. And man, what a screamer that thing yep. is! Yep, right. yep, yep. Because we don't get the C sixty three AMG. So, no, no, you mean the wagon? Yeah, you know, the wagon. Yeah, yeah. I, I, in fact, uh, a couple so years ago in England, I got a C sixty three wagon <clears throat> and uh, had it in, drove it drove it from London to Manchester. Oh, it was the best, delightful. Yeah. But yeah. you're but so you're not you're more of a homebody than you used yeah. to, used to be. Okay, yeah. But Which the daily nice. the daily is the twenty twenty two. It's so usually the, the it's usually the Sienna. I I also just got a new Sequoia. And I really oh. love that. Which, so that which one? TRD Pro? Um, it's the, I got the yeah. Capstone. Oh. I thought about the TRD top Pro, the but I was like, let's just get wild. Let's okay. go get, so. Um, yeah. And you don't do rock crawling. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Cause I've got a TRD Pro Tundra that's that cool lunar rock, which is probably my favorite color they've ever done. So I was like, I don't need two TRD Pros. Right, right. I'll just get this one. But uh, okay. so those two are what I reach for. Uh, the van, here's what I think. I've always fought the minivan fight for people. This is probably my fourth minivan. Jesus. If you have uh, more than one child, you ought to just get a minivan. Because if you think about it, all the SUVs that are out are really just jacked up station wagons. You're right. But smaller. You're right. So really this thing that makes people think, oh, I don't need a minivan, that really has to do with what other people think. It doesn't have anything to do with the you. two kids? Three. Three. Okay. Yeah, my daughters are 14, about to be 15. Uh, twelve and nine. Okay. So I have a friend um, who has she has four kids, and I remember she was like, "Should I get an Escalade?" Oh. And I'm like, "You got four kids. You're not fooling anybody. Get yeah. the minivan. Yeah, you know? get it. I mean, yeah. number one, it's the most comfortable vehicle that I own. Right, hands yeah. down, it gets the best mileage of anything I own. But also, you can put the seats down and go to Home Depot and load that sucker up. Yeah. So from a functionality standpoint, no, like, I know it can do all those things. It's yeah. fantastic. It feels like a Lexus inside there, right? It really, oh, it's I mean, mine's metallic brown, mine's metallic blue. Kind of a bad Lexus. Uh, no, come on. I got the brown <laughs> interior, which I really like. Then I put some some bronze wheels in there. I changed the chrome trim to bronze. Oh god, airbags. Ed, why don't you no just do an all mini I could. No, we are. We're going to do it. Episode, I could. Yeah. Do you have a Sienna? No, but we're, he, we're but he loves them. We're looking yeah. at we're looking at trading in the your, in the Porsche. Your wife wants a minivan. She's, she's I'm finally, telling she's you, yes. called it. When you can, has, when no. you have I'll your keys, you, when okay. you have your keys in your pocket, and you wave your foot underneath oh, yeah. the door, and the doors the, open. The do- dual sliders. I did. Here's Come what's on. fun. During the pandemic, why am I doing this? What have I done in my life? Late of the pandemic, talking about minivans. There, my buddy Nathan. Gosh, what's Nathan's last name? He's on iCarly. I don't know. So I'm going to look that up, Nathan. Nathan I'm sorry. So he called me, and he was like, hey, I'm thinking about getting a van uh, or an SUV. Like, kind of walk me through it. And so I was like, hey, I've got an idea. I'm going to create this whole, like, video around this thing. And so we did it, and he went uh, and got a Sienna, and I walked him through all the features. And sure enough, he got one. He loves it. Like, we did the whole thing the. You have a lot of pull Toyota. It, could you just please tell them it is the perfect car if they made a plug-in hybrid. If they could give me 29, let's call it, or okay. 32 miles of pure electric driving range. The new, That's what the new Prius, the new Prius, which looks awesome. Crest, Nathan Crest. I mean, awesome's a stretch. Prius is amazing. Better, Dude, I went to Costco. I, I, had, I had one on a short loan. Mm. Went to Costco, loading it up, walk mm. out. 
couple walks by, that's a gorgeous car. I'm like, this is the first time in history anybody has seen a Prius and said that is a gorgeous car. You know, but I, I was, couldn't I couldn't I, I was driving around in a Nissan uh, Murano Cross Cabriolet, and I had two different people tell me what a gorgeous car was. Oh, yeah. So people are insane. Well, it's just still so, a Prius. Just so that, we're clear. What a unicorn. This, huh? this <laughs> Prius, this Prius uh, Prime, the plug-in hybrid version, 37 miles of uh, electric drive if you get the all-wheel drive. I think it's 44 if you get the front drive. Yeah. No. That means you're never, most people will never need to fill sure. it up. Or you get an Ionic 5 and it goes 300 miles and you don't have yeah, to worry about true. gasoline. Yeah, Also true, yeah. but, but <laughs> again, for the long haul yeah. and anytime you leave, we, no, we, we know the infrastructure problem. So yeah. I, I'm just making an yeah. appeal yeah, yeah. to, to and Rutledge, dude, the, the new so. one is, the new Prius is so nice. It yeah. looks great. I mean, to those, like, it's a totally different I got to drive it. It does look better. But I, but everyone's like, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm like, come if you ever need down. If you ever need a poster child for the Prius, my, <laughs> my dear friend, Cal Petty, one of my Best friends got three hundred thousand miles on a Prius yeah. before they finally really? traded it. Yeah, but Kyle Petty had a Prius. Hell yes, he did. That's what he would wow. say. He loved that thing. He would drive if he could have turned it into an El Camino. I think he would have. <laughs> well, he, uh, well, he could have. So much. I want to. I want to eventually get to misconceptions about uh, about people that you know in mm. the, and in the sports that you've been in because you said something really interested uh, interesting when we were talking about uh, Mark Martin about like kind of what's on his mind and, and sure and, and but before that. So we still got to get back to Hot Wheels Olympics. I know, I know. Mm. One, just a quick thing because you mentioned that you have three teenage girls. Do they think dad's cool? Or are you at the stage where oh. you're like, or like dad's not cool? Are you like super not cool? We like, we passed the a nine year old thinks you're cool still, right? Like, yes. Okay, she does. God love her for it. The twelve year old sometimes. The high school are absolutely not. Yeah, she'll no. come back though. Yeah, that's what I hear. I mean. The thing, they, sometimes, Maybe. like we had a conversation a couple weeks ago where they were like, why are you always so happy when you wake us up? <laughs> and I was like, I feel like I'm getting attacked as a human right now. They're like, well, what? just come in and tell us to wake up. And I was like, like that? And she's like, well, no, don't do it like that. I was like, there we are. So right, I was like, right. I think we start every day. With a smile. And they're like, but you have, like, fun music playing and stuff. And I was like, I know. <laughs> so there was definitely when, when I think pre-Flora is Lava, you know, when that show came out in June of 20, and most people were still home, uh, 38 million people watched that show in the first month. Now, yeah. I only know that. Netflix is super proprietary about that they stuff. They are, but at, yeah. at the end of the year thing, when they were talking about, here's what we did for all of 20, that show was number seven on the list for all of Netflix global. Mm. Right. And there was like people kind of knew they would see dad on TV sometimes to them. And he was doing different stuff. Some people talk about top gear. Like people have always come up and talk to me about car stuff and or shows TV in front of them. But that was like an overnight thing where all of their friends were like, that's your dad. Oh, right. right Whoa, right, that's right, your, right. your dad's the floor is lava guy. And right. it was, it was just a total shift. And it was for them. cool then, but now they're yes. like, I roll you now. They're like, I'm like mm. Well, you know, I'm still me every day, and I realize that that's not going to work <laughs> for some people. But like, I tried to take, like, one day I took the GR Supra to school to drop off my high schooler. And it's got, um, TJ Hunt sent me a cool wing for it in the front carbon fiber spoiler. It's got um, rotiforms on there. What color? It's white. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I did a Magnaflow exhaust. I think it's perfect. It's not insane. And she was so angry getting out of the car. Drop me off at the corner, Dad. She's like, this car is so inconvenient. And I was like, what? Kind of a – why would you say that? She's like, it's just – it's like low and it's hard to get in and out of. And I was like, but this is the coolest car I own. But but backing up to Flores Lava, which, again, I've seen all three seseasons. Thank you. I mean, my my kid just is gaga for it. But, like – the, right before Floor's Lava, there was that show, Is It Cake? Which, which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which yep. is like... Oh, this is when they like make these yeah. hyper-real things yeah. and, and like cut into it. But, like, you know, look, it was, like, suddenly, like, my kid was, f- like, three and, like, you know, daycare's closed. And, like, you know, it's like, what do we do all day with the three-year-old? Sure. And then I remember, because my wife was fighting, like, we can't just let him watch TV. And finally, like, our pediatrician was like, it's the pandemic. 12 hours of TV is, is fine. Yeah. He did like, not say that yeah he's like, 12 fuck. hours just yeah. keep them alive no he's just like he's like this like this you're, you're gonna time. go because we were going crazy trying to like play games with a three-year-old sure. for 12 hours a day so i was like that, that's what started it was is it cake and it was the most fun i ever had was watching because we're running around the house like richard is it cake you know but then floor's lava was even kind of better because then it became like hey we can turn off the tv and the floor 
is lava, so we're jumping from the table to the kitchen island. And the like... amount of pictures I've received from urgent cares all <laughs> over this country would really surprise. I kind of thought I should have kept a record because so many of oh, them would happen, great. and sometimes I, if I could, I'd try to like, hey. But did you, so have, did you have any idea that it would become, and I, I don't even know if no. your kids probably do, but no. you know, you think it would become a phenomenon like no, that? No, absolutely not. I mean, the, the amount of people that I've heard talk about it, like, you know, um, Dak Shepard, who became a friend of mine doing Top Gear, he was on there with us. He and Kristen were playing, loved it. Their daughters just, they were like, we don't care what y'all do. We need you to get on this show. Right. Like, we need you. That's how we will establish coolness. The amount of people that talk about it, and it just became part of the vernacular, it was insane. And even, like, Megan that created the show, she's had this idea, like, this. I think this would be fun. We go to work on it. Um, there's a thing in Atlanta. There's a, a huge radio show called... Uh, uh, the Burt Show. And okay. this guy, Burt Weiss, does this thing every year called Burt's Big Adventure, where he'll take families, and it could be kids that might have a chronic illness or disease or, you know, families going through stuff, and he takes them all to Disney World, all expense paid trip, and they always do something fun for each person. Well, there's a little boy named Toan, and he loves Flora's Lava. And turns out he's in Peachtree City. Oh, wow. Uh, and we decided we're going to throw him a Flora's Lava party. So that's one of the things, like, that's one of my <laughs> summer highlights. Hmm. Uh, and I got to get creative because he's in a wheelchair, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what's some fun, like, obstacles and things we can make. And it's one of those moments where you're like, dude, I can't believe I got to be a part of this thing that can can mean something yeah, yeah, yeah. to so many people. And you just think about, like, what a time of all the crap that was going on. We all got to just sit and be basically kids at whatever age we were and go, like, oh, my gosh, you see that guy just getting hit in the face <laughs> when he missed that jump? It's and the just greatest. Going, oh. Well, so, so, so real quick. So when we ran out of Floor of Lava episodes to rewatch for the 9,000th sure. time, I found Wipeout. Oh, my gosh. The, Wipeout's like on, like, Pluto or what are yeah. the <laughs> – What a ride. Oh, it's the it's – the, I, mean, I, I showed my kids – I don't know if you guys remember MXC, Most Extreme Elimination oh, yeah, Challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That was a oh. Japanese game show called Takeshi's Castle that yes. was redubbed for yes. Spike. Yes. And it had these two ah. it had these two hosts. <laughs> I've been showing my 14-year-old – and some of them are not inappropriate because they pick, like, names for – it'll be, like, the Candy Stripers – or strippers that like candy, and those are the two teams that are competing. <laughs> right. So you're trying to figure out, like, I don't know if now is the time we explain this. Right, but it, right, right. that was, like, right. a perfect mix of Wipeout. I think that's really where Wipeout came from. Those people had to have been hurt oh, yeah. most oh, oh, shows. So my, my, my wife was, like, doing, like, background, for being extra for movies back then, and a lot of, and a lot of people who were extras, they just wanted to be on TV, so they right. do it. And, like, yeah, like she has many friends that had, like, You know, they'd have SEALs. They'd injuries. have Navy SEALs go through and run all the courses. I had one of our Top Gear producers, Adam McFarland, went and did it, and he he they wouldn't let him do it because they were like, no, no, we already ran it. It's fine. They're like, yeah. what? No, they paid out, like, because this guy, like, he blew his whole knee apart plus oh, his I'm ankle sure. or something. Jeez. Yeah, it was wild. That show was, in, I can't, it, like, how did that happen? And there was Great a, you question. know, there was a British version that oh, Richard, yeah. Richard Hammond hosted? Yeah. So that was filmed in. It was filmed at the King Gillette Ranch in Malibu. I think um, they just voiced it. I don't know if he even had to come here. I don't. I doubt he did. Yeah, brilliant yeah. guy. But but they like. I think they did a lot. They just had that big giant set, so they farmed it out. It was so wild. amazing. Speaking totally. of yeah. shows, and because we're slightly running out of time, what um, let's let's um, let's sort of hit rewind and make sure we we cover this Hot Wheels. Oh yeah, show. Oh, it was a challenge before Hot Wheels Olympics. Real quick, we got to. Oh, I mean, right. dude, that you're hosting the Olympics. I mean, it was really fun. What the? What is that? That's got to be insane. Like, what? it's real. Here's what I'll tell you. I I did Rio. I did Pyeongchang. <sighs> uh, so cold there. Holy cow! <laughs> South Korea is beautiful. It is so cold. Uh, and then where else did we go? Um, you did Olympics. Oh, and, Tokyo. And, Hello, and, oh, yeah. Olympics and Paralympics. Correct. Uh, no, just Olympics. Oh, just Olympics. Um, Tokyo was wild because we were still kind of under quarantine. Rules, you got in, but we got in, and okay, then we yeah. had like four days to explore at right. the end. Um, it was amazing. The cars that I saw, the people, the wildest yeah, part of rules, all of yeah. them. We go to Brazil. And at that time, you know, I definitely learned, like, right before any Olympics, there's this sort of buzz of, like, oh, it's going to be bad. There's going to be bad stuff. And then I get there, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. All these people are great. They're excited. We're we're there. And so you definitely get a new perspective for how that works. But I will say that NBC had hired full-time security um, for – what was that guy? Bob Costas. Yeah. His security guy was room next to mine. Then it was Bob's. Um, Dan Patrick's there, hung with Dan every day, loved him. Uh, But – no one knew who any of those guys were. Of course. But yeah. everywhere we went, everyone knew me. Because? Way more than in the U.S. Because of? They love cars. Top Gear aired twice a day oh. down there. 
Now, here's the real kicker. Oh, I started to notice after about day four when people are asking, like, oh, can we get a picture? Yeah, yeah. When I would talk, their facial expressions would change really quickly. They don't know my voice. Right. <laughs> they know the Portuguese right, actor that right, dubs over right, my voice right. who is super high and super effeminate in his voice. Tanner gets the, like, super low <laughs> machismo one. So then by the end, I just quit oh, talking. But Dan so Patrick great. was so funny. He would take – it was, like, probably the 30th time someone asked him to take a picture, and he would just take a picture of himself first, and he would look at me and be like, I want him to know what a real celebrity looks like in the U.S. <laughs> right. Oh, and that's take great. The, he was so – so Did fun, cost, was Costas bummed out? Never no noticed. He never noticed. Like oh, he was okay. just doing his thing. He was right, always right, so right. nice to me. R- super kind guy. I did, it's funny you mentioned the translator because head to head, we were broadcasting it in different languages. Yeah. Of my old show um, on Instagram, the translator. She was like living in Buenos Aires. She got in touch with me, and she's like, "What is like some word I said? Yes. Like what? What does this mean?" And I'm like, whoa, we're being dubbed? And <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, it's we- a wild thing. BBC yeah. have a whole language center because yeah. we, we were, for Top Gear, we were in 80 different languages. But that means, y'all, when I say something like, <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Yeah. Give it a shout they out to my buddy Southside Steve. They've got to do that in Portuguese. How would that possibly? I just oh, laugh thinking a... they made stuff up all the time. Oh about. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. But that's okay, when you when you, I mean, th- like that's got to be when you, you know, your agent or whoever calls and says you want to do the Olympics. Like, what's, oh, yeah. what's that feeling like? It was incredible. I mean, all the stuff I've gotten to do with NBC Sports is just the coolest thing. They, but Olympics, yeah, absolutely. Because also, nothing bad happens in the world for two and a half weeks, right? And you feel when you're there, you get to feel this incredible support of every nation for each other simultaneously. I've just never experienced anything else like that in the world. I got to see Michael Phelps swim yeah. in Rio wow. and just what that moment felt yeah. like. It wasn't like just people that were pulling for America were excited. Every person in that room was so pumped. Same thing for like Katie Ledecky. When you watch her swim, it's hard to process what's happening. Right. And then you see how far out she is in front of every other Olympic athlete who is the best in <laughs> yeah. their place. And, and you're like, this is unreal what's happening. So it just, I've never experienced anything like that. What was the, you had to prep for a lot of different sports, though, right? Sure. So what was the, what was the hardest one to, that you, like way at, like outside your wheelhouse that you had to prep well, for? Well, because I wasn't super focused on the sports, I was there doing Color, like kind of, yeah, I was, I was trying to give you a sense of place and, and do stories about the people and what was going on. Um, the vegan weightlifter that I met in Rio, who I think I think he was in um, Game Changers on Netflix, that mm-hmm, documentary. Mm-hmm. That was so cool because that was such an eye opening thing. This huge swole dude with dreads from Louisiana took me to lunch, and I was like, "How do you know like how much calories you need in this stuff?" He's like, "Man, guys in lab coats don't know me." They're like, they have no idea what I'm doing, what I'm putting. He's like, you just, he said, everything that we eat, all the protein they get, it came from vegetables and grass and everything else. He's like, so, like, meat doesn't just have protein. So I'm going to eat the same stuff that the cow did. And I was like, what is happening right now? I feel like everything I learned about food just got blown up in this one minute. We're just having salads together. So they're also the, all these life changing things for me because I, after that, I went vegetarian in 18. And spent uh, three years as a vegan. So, like, dude, there's you crazy. Did? Absolutely, yeah. I never felt better. Wow. I'm not. I'm not great at it right now, but it's yeah. uh, wow, it's hard. I, and I you said barbecue. you were a ve- you were you a vegan when you were hosting the barbecue show? So I didn't. No, I was just a vegetarian okay. at the time. Okay. But okay. I would like. Still, I would try. I had pitched that show to Netflix so. before I had gone vegetarian. <laughs> and no one knows, by the way. Like I've never well, said now, that. Now publicly. you're now. But it's kind of the funny. Yeah, yeah, it just yeah. was a fun. I just wanted huh. to try it, and and I felt better and. God, that um, that food looks so good. Oh man, it was incredible. And Rashid, so I'm he finished second. I'm still really close with Rashid. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and they've done another version of that show with a slightly different name. Hopefully it goes well, but I don't have anything to do with that one. Yeah, but yeah. It's, what did, what I did love you barbecue. when you fell off the vegan wagon, what was it? What was it? What, <laughs> what did it? Chicken wings. Oh. <laughs> Lemon pepper, wet, hot. Nice. We All played right. golf and I was like, you know what? I guess I feel like I gotta have some wings. So one one request before before we do some hot wheels. Yeah, are you gonna do the? Do you know if you're gonna do the Olympics again? I don't know yet. I I really hope so. Next one is um, Paris, Paris. Okay, twenty twenty four. Yeah. So, so I man, I really hope so. My, my request is just: can we get some weightlifting on TV? Ooh, okay. I just want more weightlifting. There's never. I I I like. I don't. I don't. It's like, so like, yes, everyone likes. They lift the weight up. Dude, Dude, it's so intense. Dude, it's so insane it's with the their lifting. craziest thing in <laughs> yeah. person. More Toyota, weightlifting. It's oh, funny. Toyota's doing a ton of work. Um, they have so many different athletes and para athletes that are going to be there. So I might even, if I'm not there for NBC, I might be there 
for them or for maybe Toyota. both. Got yeah. It. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just is – it's something that I think everyone should go see. When I was in – I, I grew up in Birmingham, moved to Atlanta, and then like, hey, next summer they're going to be there. And so we went to one event, 96. I think, which yeah. was wrestling, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And that was so nuts. I mean, it was – I've never been to any event like that, yeah. that you got this crazy sense and it was all happening. They had several matches happening at once. Too. Well, I mean, that's – look, at you know, the 84 LA Olympics. So we got to – my dad and my mom, they took us to a couple. We saw a lot of soccer because our friend was involved with the, sure. the soccer thing. And it was awesome. I mean, it was just – it was this global – event. my first time experiencing like a global event was like – it was really cool. I just oh, remember yeah. going to McDonald's and buying the cups. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The, same the, the same of the Eagle pin. Cups were big. <laughs> Uh, so, okay. Yeah. All right. So let's let's Hot say rewind. Wheels. We talked a lot. Of, we talked a lot around it. We talked a lot about it. Yeah, we yeah. are. Um, we're recording this in May. This is May eighteenth. Eighteenth. Uh, so we are probably. This is. We're probably a month out before this one. And you airs. show goes live May thirtieth. That's right. Okay. So it'll be. So it's perfect. aired, and you've loved it. And, and I appreciate you guys watching. <laughs> okay, your right. support. Your support it's, means the world. It's I'm, aired on <clears throat> NBC, and the following day on Peacock. Peacock yeah. Okay. And, so and what we, we day, got the day, day, day time like. Tuesday night, 10 p.m. It's right after America's Got Talent. All right. And oh, it's 30 cool. minutes Wonderful long. This it's is an, a, hour an hour long. An hour long. Yeah, yeah. Hour. Okay. Believe it. Yeah. And the setup is, this is a Hot Wheels show. This is a, like the this is a, kind of like the Legends tour. Sure. But conceived as a, as a TV show. And, and I want to be clear. The people that build cars for the Legends tour, it's a completely different ball game. And their skill sets and everything else. I just want to give mad props to them. This is where we take two people yep. and a car from their past, some sort of connection, and then we give them a team uh, of incredibly skilled builders that we call the carpoolers. Um, and together, they're going to take this car from their past and transform it into this larger than life, over the top, a full scale Hot Wheels. Because when we think about Hot Wheels, you know, 164 scale, they have so many details that are really cool and just intrinsically Hot Wheels. So we try to do that. At a full scale, and it was it was awesome. We have so there's eight one hour shows, and then there's a big two hour finale. And the idea is that of the two people that compete every show, one will move on. That car goes to the finale. Ultimately, we'll pick three out of all of those eight. Those three people get a chance to build a totally different car that they probably don't have a connection to. Uh, and then whoever wins that, now you win twenty five grand if you win the the show right but if you win the big show the big finale you win another 50 grand and, and that car gets turned into a hot wheels which has to be the coolest thing oh. like so you know i I've, I've judged a bunch of the legend things sure and i remember the there was this one of uh, the nash it was the first one that won so yes. it won the la and then it went on to the national competition i think it was in vegas and it won that and it made it a Hot Wheels. It, it, it was funny because it was called the it's called the Nash Hole, and Hot Wheels didn't have changed the name, to, oh, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. to like the Nash or something, right? Um, and I was so stoked for these guys because it was like it was I can't remember if they were brothers or father and son, but the usual story. Oh like, yeah, it was just our dream to build this unbelievably cool like hot rod Nash, which is the right. most ridiculous thing. And I bought like I can't even tell you how many. And again, this is a because uh, you felt a part of that too. Oh my god! Didn't you? I, I, well, you know, it was one of those things where you know there's a couple cars that we were leaning towards. Yeah, you know, and 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 it was just like once it was kind of like you know like Leno was there and Corolla was there and and uh, who else was there? Um, uh, Dave Merrick, you know from from Acura, and you know just you know a bunch of L.A. car folks. Sure. And then it just became, this has to be the one. This is it. And I, I must have bought a dozen of these stupid things. I mean, they're great. but you know. Absolutely. And I, I, I have some in the safe. I threw them in the safe. You That's know? awesome. Like, it's just but like, the, I think what's so, so cool is that I'm watching these people, and, and everyone had some great connection to cars and whatever. But the same dream, the same dream that they're following and chasing is the same dream that I have. Like, it's the same dream. I think any of us that are into cars wish they had a Hot Wheels of their car. Right. Like it's, that's it's, Mount Everest it's, to me. It's funny though because like you know you I, I you know I know what you're up to with all these cars. You modify cars like crazy. You're yeah. always like you know I, I I'm really into like leave it stock. Sure. You know what I mean? Like 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 don't like I'm you know uh, I I just like to leave stuff stock for I just I just feel boring. Well, I also feel, and I know a lot of automotive engineers, and I'm like, I'm going to make it worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
all I can do. Sure. Like, like the, Maybe. You know, I've screwed some yeah. stuff up, yeah. for sure. And I, I have a friend who has a dyno at his shop, and I remember he was telling me, he's like, I've never dynoed a car with aftermarket headers that makes more torque. I've never no done way. it. No way. Yeah. Mm. He's like, oh. he's like, it's just. I wonder what stuff they're using. I've seen a bunch. That... Turns out he's a smog. Test <laughs> oh, damn. No. Yeah, he was that's just, that's he was right. just, he's like, you might get a little horsepower. It just always screws up the torque. Well, so, so, wait, hang on. So back to the show. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you, you said you filmed that this is overseas? Correct. In Man- Manchester. Manchester. Yeah. I only know this because I was up for it. Why? <laughs> Why? No clue. Oh. I don't. I don't know. I'm not on that level. And and <laughs> they, so ten cars, but you said you spent two and a half months in Man- beautiful correct. Manchester yeah. Yeah. during a beautiful time of the year with great weather. You know what? Everyone kept saying it's going to be cold and rainy, and I was like, "There's got to be more." And boy, it was cold and rainy. Yeah, uh, man, was, but I had a great time. How's got to go to food was good. Yeah, um, Manchester's they, all right. Yeah. They don't use salt the same way that we do, and they also don't have an obesity problem. So, also, just hear me out. I could. It might be that I needed to correct it a little bit too. But uh, the people were great, man. I loved it. Uh, were the you, car were you getting rad. a lot of? Uh, British cars, or were you bringing in American cars? No, all all American stuff. Oh, that's yeah. so they're flying them in or Correct. something. Yeah. yeah, we got we and there's a bunch there that are in different. Yeah. I mean, it's the first place I saw a GR Yaris on the street. Number one, I was so stoked. Why on earth would they film it out there? I don't know. I mean, I've never seen anyone build across from each other in a week and have two garages that are all in this one big studio. So legit, they were you would so if you're there two months, so in ten episodes. So, so we were there ten week, weeks. Yeah. A yeah. week, week, a week. Correct. Like legit, like hundred percent soup, soup to nuts, no fakery. No. That's what wow. I'm saying. Like it was right. bonkers. And it's not you know, there's a million shows where they're like, oh we gotta build this house in three days. You know, or we they're lose all cut the shop. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but this one they the, the teams other had a week to build these. Okay. Uh, and the very last day the super fans would be pushed out and and we would finish the paint, the wrap, whatever stuff they had to do. So when it gets unveiled to them, they're seeing this thing happen for the first time. And the coolest part, I remember Terry Cruz is there. I look over at Terry. Terry's crying. And I was like, what? Terry's? I look over at the guy. I was like, oh, my God, that guy's crying. And then I was like, oh, I'm crying. Uh, what just happened? Like, there's way more emotion to this thing than I think any of us could have ever guessed. Well, you had you had guests like Terry Cruz, Anthony Anderson, uh, Sung Kang, our buddy who was on for yeah. episode three. I Loved think? him. Yeah. And uh, Leno came out. Yep, uh, oh, cool. Leno was there. Uh, Ted Wu uh, from Hot Wheels was there. Design. Such a great yeah. guy. Ted's great. Super I tall. Such, he's such so a much fun guy. with him. Joel McHale. Joel we McHale. Talked about uh, who, we've, who we've um, Joel who yeah, we've he, talked about for about a year and a half as a, to be there. Seventeen oh, times. We said we said yeah. we scheduled him so many. He's yeah. canceling. I'll him. tell him he's got to do it. But man, he's got you know he he's a real car guy. Is Joel a real car guy? Absolutely, he is. Dude, he's got two different. He's got an Icon Land Cruiser. First off, I think it's a forty-five FJ forty-five Troop Carrier. Oh. Then he's got. He started telling me he's like, yeah, I got a, Why a didn't Toyota they go Land into Cruiser. Acting? I could have had money. I know. It's not hard to do. It's right. not hard to do. He's like, I got an FJ sixty-two. I, I got it built by Cor. And I was like, Corsetti Cruisers. And he's like, Yeah, do you know? I was like, Yeah, I've been following them for years. Wait. It's one of those ones that they post a lot. Yours, and he's like, "Yeah, I've got the navy. Oh, oh you've got the navy blue with the stripes. Like, I own a sixty, and they're down the street. From oh, me. I just I, I, my I mean, 60. I got I got I friendly with it. Joel because he got a turbo a Porsche Turbo S, Ooh. and and we just started talking about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you know, you know, a guy who could do some uh, sixty series uh, electrics. I got a I got a weird. Right, isn't it wild? The headlights are. That's it. That's okay. the problem. <laughs> what you, you try to put in? I tried to put a new bulbs in the back. It fried it. I, I, yeah, yeah. And then so now, it's a, I know it's a twelve volt harness, but mine's a twenty four volt because it's a diesel. Oh, oh wow! We'll talk this, off. We'll talk left off hand line. drive? No, no, right hand drive. This is mine's Canadian. a unicorn. California Canadian. registered eighty seven Toyota Land Cruiser from Canada. Oh, yeah. Okay, with a two H, but I put in the JDM twelve HT, the factory turbo diesel, and a five, wow. and a five speed. Yeah, we had to do something funky. We might have had to run a relay because those headlights are essentially always on, and the switch breaks it. Yes, the, which is weird. But... I got to ask a question though, because I'm such a big fan of. Please, him. how cool is Terry Crews? Amazing. He's got to be the coolest guy on the well, planet, yeah, dude. Right? The guy's apparently he's, like, awesome. he's a savant uh, with, with the pencil too. He draws no. like crazy. You didn't no. see his Instagram? No, like, dude, I didn't dude, know that. The dude draws like whatever you want. Like it's it's insane. What was so cool is you know. So I'm there with my friend Hurt. Hurt. A lot yeah. of people know from Hoonigan. There's yeah, Delal, and and there's us sitting there just hanging with Terry. And in all these, you know, I had a million questions for him because to me, he's one of those guys that I look up to. As when you talk about President Camacho, sorry, staying power, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Frito, I, I, Frito would have loved it, but I like mean, I asked yeah. him about that because I'm like, dude, did you have any ideas? Like I didn't hear anything about that for five years. No one right. said a word. Right, right. I thought I wasted my time, and then it's this cult yeah. classic. But like that, that's a guy that not only can he be 
this uh, symbol of strength and hard work, but he's also like one of the most vulnerable people oh, yeah. that's been through this industry. Like, it's just incredible. Is he a big car guy? A big car guy? Oh, yeah. Would he, would he, he's could, got a six series. Uh, would he do the podcast? I'm sure. I don't oh, know if dude. he's got any interest in electric, but don't the, take uh, whatever. that personally. Yeah, we, we can, we can be on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like, I fell in love with him watching that movie White Girls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so <laughs> good. And I was like, this is the funniest guy in Hollywood. Yeah. Like, I hope I hope people realize this. He's Cause amazing. Because he, he's muscular, you know, he's in the Expendables or whatever, but, like, he's funny. Yeah. Like, he's, he just seems like the coolest Dude, guy. Check out his Instagram and the, the, right. and the drawing. That's what blew me away. I was like, this guy's like a savant. He's so. amazing. So you got to tune in and see him because okay. he was he was so great on there, too. Yeah, right. it sounds so, like everyone we know is on the show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the, uh, we'll get you know, you guys thanks on for the invite. Time. I love yeah. Manchester well, uh, when it uh, rains. I, I, I like, was almost, you know, it was... Uh, I got you. Hurt, got hurt you. Took, took my job. Yes. <laughs> but I wouldn't have been Actually, here. Rutledge, I, I want to say yeah. Rutledge yeah. took your job. Oh, Let's be by honest. the way, when I got there, my hair was as long as yours. I had to chop it all off. Right. I like my short hair. All right, so the Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge will be I will say, on. it was a little funny when I, like, because they were like, hey, it's filming in Manchester. Here's what the pay is. It's it's this You time. leave tomorrow, and you're like, what? Well, no, no, I was, you know, and then, and then it was like, I never, you know, they never really tell you no. They just like never call. And then okay. it's like Rutledge Wood. I'm like, God damn it. Dude, I've had a show canceled before <laughs> and I've literally never heard from the people. Yeah. They just never called me. No. And I yeah, didn't yeah. even, it show didn't even get canceled. They were just like, they decided they weren't going to make it anymore. And I was like, I saw them a year later. I was like, were y'all ever going to call me? And they were like, no. Why? Well, we figured you'd put it together. <laughs> we will right. let you know when this episode airs. Oh, great. We'll, we'll, we'll just put it that way. Yeah, 10 p.m. on <laughs> Tuesday right, night right. on NBC. It's no, the no, next no. day on Peacock. I know for ours, you were finishing the yeah. – I felt like you were reading it one more time. Yes. Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge. So they're, they're our buddies. I just They just did something really cool with us. I don't know if you know this. The, um, the Hot Wheels? The Curtis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Motor Trends – oh, I should have to tell us. Yeah, it's fine. It's already out, apparently. Motor Trends' first ever cover car – which is a 61 Curtis, is was made into a matchbox. It better be a 49 Curtis because... Oh, sorry, 40, 49. <laughs> 48. 40, sorry, 49 Curtis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, How cool is that? Our first, episode was, our first issue was 49. Yeah, right? yeah. Sorry, better sorry, not sorry. be a 61 and we got some no, 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 no. problems. I was, saying, I was confusing because there's only <laughs> yeah, yeah. six of them in existence. Right, right, right. So yeah, a 49 uh, Curtis is, uh, was made into a matchbox. And in the same green that we have in our office. So how whatever. about that? I know. Yeah, totally and well. Matchbox owns Hot Wheels. Absolutely, which, I learned which a lot. A lot about of people that. don't know that. The coolest thing, hanging with Ted Wu and getting to to hear some of that sort of the amount of work that goes into every single Hot Wheels, and just the little Easter eggs and stuff they hide. Dude, it's un- you'd have no idea. They, they wouldn't let me take a picture of anything, but I got like the grand tour there one day, and it is it's just insane. They're, yeah. They're it's, right around the corner from us. They're right around the corner, but they, they, they won't let you take your phone out and take a picture. Sure. But, like, my, like just the, what they do, because it's just like a mini car factory, sort Absolutely. of. Yeah, you know, and they yeah. get to make the coolest stuff. I mean, coolest again, stuff. it's the reason why you and I still buy them I, as I, twins. And, and my, my wife, too. like, thinks I'm I, I literally from another mother. <laughs> I literally have two drawers <laughs> that are just filled with unopened Hot Dude, Wheels. I, just, I have them in every – there's <laughs> some sort of Hot Wheels in have, every single room I have house. bins in the garage. Oh, yeah. I think that's great. I, I, yeah, waiting for my son to be old enough. Yeah. We have, I mean, my son had, I mean, they're his, uh, mm-hmm. but we have pr- at least 300 open. But I have two drawers full of unopened. And then uh, yeah. I have uh, uh, Car Guy Billy, uh, one of our guys at Motor Trend. Um, every once the, the boxes? No, no, no. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get like, I got like a, um, an FD uh, Mazda, you know, RX7. Uh, RX7. Oh, I knew that new dark gray one with the three on the door. And uh, well, no, this was just dark gray, but I, I, you know, like I put a thing on Instagram and like everyone started freaking out. They're like, you got it? And I, I'm like, what's this worth? And he like, he just knows. He's like, yeah. oh, it's blah, 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 blah. And so that, I have a couple in the safe that have value. I, it, in I where I live, if you hit antique stores, there's also, you can find some real cool ones in antique stores, but I, I do get that feeling that this show is going to yeah. I think it's going to rekindle a lot of that for a lot of people because also mm. Ted the education I got from Ted was incredible hearing how many of the ones have that you know this one of 12 or whatever the value is insane on Oh it's crazy. Things. And and I will also say my wife figured this one out but like some of the ones from like before 1970 um don't let your kids put them in their mouth because they're lead paint. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. And we, okay. we got... but for the record, everything was. Well, I hear you. Uh, yes, it's nothing about against. No Hot toys from our childhood yeah. should be. But held, but we, right? we we got our we got our, our last house. We got uh, it was when our son was born. We got everything lead tested. It turned mm. out all the paint was lead because oh, it was yeah. a rental. But my wife 
I had this van. It was like a black and gold Hot Wheels van, and she like pulled a paint chip off it and had it tested, and it was lead. <laughs> well, let me ask you on that happy memory. What do you remember your first Hot Wheels? And we'll end it with that. I'll I'll go first. Yeah, please. I think. I and I just tried to Google it. I can't find it. But I believe one of the first ones I ever got because my parents were not super supportive of such things. I think I got it in a, in a Happy Meal. Oh. I, and it was it was a, some racing version of an American fastback of that era. So I'm thinking, I'm like, is it wasn't a, a Pacer or something? It had been like I, a Monza? It was, yeah, it was. But I remember it was red and blue, and they had some racing logos on it. So I just tried to look it up. I feel so, like my first would what I would have been interested in as a as a kid would have been like a Camaro or a Corvette or a Mustang. I you know I I and I remember it's I pretty have a, broad, Johnny. Yeah. I I have a <laughs> I have a distinct memory of having like a blue Camaro Hot mm. Wheel, but I but I also feel like I had a Knight Rider Hot Wheel. Yeah, but I might have just had a black Trans Am, and then I know I had a Countach. Yes, at some point I had a Countach. I had that like uh, you know I had. The Countach posters, which I think there was either the red or the white, and then the 911 posters, yes, we'll which guess. was white or black, I think, or red or black. Let me ask you this: well, what, what was religious? Oh, yeah. Do I think I think mine was probably. Um, so I don't remember the exact first one because I I went over. That's all I wanted. Yeah. Like that's the only toy I had for so long. And then when I would like beat them up enough and the paint would mess up, I would get my mom's <laughs> paint pens and start <laughs> customizing them. Which is again what I still do with cars, so it makes sense. This is funny because I just found. I think I just found it, and of course to your point earlier, but it's from a history dot com story. These vintage Hot Wheels toys are worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> I think it's this, this AMX. This is the one oh, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> So, Whoops. but do, do, you, oh. do you, can you guess what your first one would have been? I, I, I feel like it was probably a Firebird. Honestly, okay. like I, I, I just knew smoking the Bandit. Even as yeah. a kid, I just knew when you saw that car, it had yeah. so yeah. much presence. Gold chicken on the hood. Yeah, you Why can't not? beat that. I have a blue hood mounted to my garage wall because I found it on Facebook for like a hundred bucks. And right. I was like, this I have to have this. Oh, that's. I'd awesome. rather have that than the whole car. I didn't love. <laughs> turns out as an adult, I'm like, no, it's not for me. But yeah. boy, yeah. the hood. Yeah, it cool. looks great. That's the thing. They weren't very good cars at that point <laughs> in history. Uh, <laughs> you got to go. They got a little bloated, a little slow. <laughs> Movie says different. Y- yeah. So Rutledge, yeah. thank you, guys. I had so much fun. Oh, Thanks awesome. for awesome. letting me be and here. Hey, and congrats on like not only all your success, but this this Hot Wheels show does look pretty cool. Thanks, like, it's, man. It's like you know, like to me, there's a bit of a Lego Masters thing too. Absolutely, it, a bit. yeah. But it's a it's like same a, people are behind it. Oh, is it the same yeah. people? Uh, I okay. hope that helps. I hope that well, helps. I, the love Terry, and the passion. Terry Crews is on both. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. also on a million things because he's so good. To be fair. He's, he's, but thank you. Yeah. It was, it thank just, you. I, I wish you a lot of luck. And thank, thank you, you for fellas. taking Appreciate a it. lot of Johnny's job so that he can stay with me as the co-host <laughs> for The Inevitable. Hooray! Hey! hey. Can, I, can I hit it one time? Yes, yes. I had a great time here on The Inevitable. <laughs> oh, Woo. God. Thank Woo. you. <laughs>